ready whenever you're ready. Uh, good evening. Welcome to the planning board meeting of August 12th. Um, I'm sorry we're starting a couple minutes late, but we were waiting on a couple people to arrive. Um, just reminding everybody at home and everybody here and my fellow board members um, that we are starting a new format. Um, while it's new to us and we can expect that you know we'll get better at it over the first couple of times, we are going to give it um, uh, at least a, a three-month try to see if it improves our efficiency and our ability to um, stay efficient and, and effective and functional. So we have assigned no times to any of the public hearings. We will open all of the public hearings that we're going to talk discuss tonight. Um, we will open them at the same time and we will uh, manage the agenda as best we can accordingly. Um, and we will largely go in order of the way that the public hearings are listed. The administrative items that are listed at the front will be taken at different times as, as makes sense. So um, to that end, um, the first administrative item is the growth, growth study committee appointments. Uh, because we have one applicant for this, the uh, position phoning in um, and another applicant who could not be here at 7.30 and wanted to know uh, what time to aim for, we selected a time for the growth study committee uh, discussion and that will be uh, at 8.30. Um, but um, we can take the other items um, quickly whenever we are able to fill in. So uh, is the, would the board like to sort of um, chip away at the administrative items quickly or start with public hearings? I'd like to do a few administrative items, I think. Okay, first we have to open, <coughs> entertain a motion to open all the public hearings that are on our agenda tonight. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, so uh, the first uh, administrative <coughs> item that we can take care of is the Zoning Advisory Committee appointments. We do have two at-large positions. We do have uh, a planning board representative to reappoint or appoint, <coughs> and we um, have the confirmation of other board liaison positions. So John, take us away. So the two at-large positions, uh, there was only one applicant for it, um, and that is Mr. Coutinho. <clears throat> okay. Do you want me to read out these? You might board? as well do the whole thing. And, and Mary has been our representative um, for the last year, and hoping that we've talked about this, hoping that she still believes she'd like to continue. Yes. Awesome. Um, we should ask if anybody else is desperately interested in challenging Mary for the position. What? No? Huh. Um, and uh, also the other board liaison positions. So, Mr. Foisey. Uh, was recommended by the chamber, yeah. and Mr. Barker Hook was recommended by the Conservation Commission. Okay, and um, the ZBA still ZBA hasn't has met. Not had a meeting, so they can't recommend yet. They anticipate that happening in September. Okay, and we can we can deal with that at that time. So what I would recommend, unless anybody has a, any objection, is we uh, vote the slate as it was just outlined. Mr. Catino has been on the ZAC for a great many years and offers a lot of experience. Um, so unless anybody has any objections. Um, I would entertain a motion to move all of those appointments. So moved. Second. And I would like to just clarify that um, Mr. Catino is going for a two-year um, appointment, and that's the that's the, the term. So for now, the terms are always going to be two years. Is yeah. that right? That's I believe so. <laughs> so when we formed this new committee. Um, last year we had some two-year appointments and some one-year appointments so that there would be some staggering and so from going forward they will all be two-year appointments and can I so clarify, yes. there's an additional two-year term vacant right there is okay, yep so there is if we think and of I, anyone who might we might encourage to apply we could do that yeah yeah so first um, uh, all those in favor of voting the slate as outlined Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? And then yes, Amy, thank you. There is one at-large position. It's a two-year at-large position um, that is open, and we encourage any uh, interested member of the public to investigate it and uh, apply if they are interested. Um, it would be a, a great place to start to speak to Mary um, by email or by phone or whatever and uh, get an idea of the time commitment and what the job is, um, but it's a great position for 
anybody, people who have not had experience in town government yet, and anybody who has experience in town government. It's a nice spot, and it's very, um, it's very meaningful for this board to have invested people on that, Zach. Okay. Um, there is a planning board vacancy. So, uh, Mr. Atwell, congratulations to him, has accepted a job that makes it impossible for him to continue um, serving as an elected member of a town board. So his position is open and this meeting and this notice serves as public notice and allows us to start the clock, encouraging um, people to think about applying. Um, it's an awesome, fun board, hardly any work. I'm kidding about that. <laughs> Um, it's yeah, it's awesome and fun. Yeah, it is awesome and fun. Um, it is a it is a sizable time commitment, uh, but any one of us would be happy to speak to uh, anybody who is interested in applying. Um, certainly, John is always available um, at town hall. And uh, what is the process as we know it with the board of selectmen? Once we make it public, yep. we can we will notice them formally. Yes. Yeah, so we will let them know. Yeah. They send out uh, an advertisement. Yes. And then we schedule a joint. So that has to be advertised for 17 days. 17 and days. We schedule uh, a joint meeting. Okay. Um, Do we have a date that we can aim for for the joint meeting? So if everything goes uh, as scheduled, it looks like September 9th could be possible for a joint meeting. Is that our meeting? That is. Okay. So, um, so the deadline to submit your application, if we are able to have the joint meeting on, at, on September 9th, and, and I, I think I speak for the board, we would like to do it sooner rather than later. It's the, the best time to get on to the board um, because um, you, wanna, you wanna be on when uh, applications are starting and the full year is almost in front of us. Um, so I hope that we can do it on September 9th. Certainly um, the deadline to get your application in will certainly be the Tuesday before that meeting, likely. Is that true? Um, I believe you need 17 days notice and then a seven day notice of the meeting. <coughs> okay. So I would have to check and see when the deadline for an application. Okay, is. so stay tuned on the deadline for the application, but we won't meet again. So definitely stay in communication either by email with a member of the planning board or um, the, the professional staff at the uh, town hall so that you are uh, aware of the deadlines, but they will all be posted. Yes. And what was Patrick's remaining term? So he was just elected. So, so yeah, but, was, but I didn't know how long his term was that he elected for. So, so he would, so whoever would fill this position only serves until the next election. Okay. That's true. And then the person who gets elected in that position fills out the rest of Patrick's term. That's true, but he only has one year on the term. He took the one right. year on expired That's seat, so it's it's, it's one, one year, year no matter no matter what for Patrick. So, um, and then we would encourage you to you know run run for the five year slot after that. But mm -hmm. um, okay, so that so if anybody has any questions about that or interest, please let us know. Any one of us know. Um, the planning board administrative rules and amendments, John. So there were some changes to the planning board. Uh, administrative rules um, that were just changes that have taken place over the last few years. Um, they're all different topics. Yeah, did anybody have any questions or concerns with them? I did not when I read them. But I read through them, they didn't seem controversial. It didn't seem way. controversial to me either. Um, do you need a vote to Accept them. I'll entertain a motion to accept those administrative changes. So moved. Second. Uh, any further discussion? <coughs> All those in favor? Oh, Second. Discussion. Mm -hmm. What? Discussion. Sure. Uh, can we put this off till next time? No. Okay. So All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I'm abstaining. Okay. Um. The Legacy Farms North bus stop issue we're going to save till later because John Westerling is not able to be here until later. Uh, Zero Princeton Road discussion. Take us away, John. So there is an abutter to Zero Princeton Road. Um, the, so that is town owned land, and they would like to acquire it from the town. Um, and the assistant town manager has asked boards to weigh in, and if there's any plans that anyone knows of for that property that the town wants to use it for, to let her know or let me know um, and give any other comments to either of us. 
So this invitation for boards and committees to, to comment goes far and wide to all boards and committees, departments. It's to get an understanding as to if there were any plans that the town yeah. had or any yeah. boards had for that land. Does, do you know, does anybody know of any particular um, interest in that parcel? It looks landlocked, right? It doesn't have frontage on a road. Yeah. <coughs> Well, it has one on a paper street. A paper street. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was kind of interesting because it was near the lake. Um, it is. Yeah. So I thought I thought potentially to give it up would be giving some recreation usage out of it, whether a small recreation center or you know a field for that neighborhood or for, for the local for that you know local group. That potentially that could be something the town might use it for. Um, but that's just my thought. Through the chair to kind of follow up on that. I mean, we've been spending a lot of money buying property for the town and, and certain commissions so that they can't be built on. I was just wondering why we'd go with the policy of starting to sell town land. So, uh, uh, the music? I don't, I don't <laughs> necessarily, I don't necessarily know the answer to that question. I do know that when there is a piece of property that is open and hasn't been utilized and abutters are interested in it, it's a common process to, in, you know, specifically ask all boards and committees if there is any reason that the town would be specifically interested in, in retaining rights to, to, to the property. So I don't know that I, I don't know anything about it, and I don't know any reason why we would have a, an opinion on um, not selling it to the abutter. But I'm just asking others if they know. Yeah, just just to follow up, I'd like to keep it as open space. So uh, you are not on open space committee, right? No. Yeah. So I, I presume that open space is talking about this, um, but we can. Um, what, do you know? Is there a timeline? So I mean, I we could certainly uh, ask for that input before we make a determination. I don't know anything about the property. So yeah, I, I don't either. I think it's, it's a good idea. Yeah, thanks. Do, do we have any more history on how long the town has owned it? If there is any uh, intended I use, or I don't have any. It, it does say in here that it was taken in 1978 to back taxes. Yeah. And it is this is basically just a letter that was issued to you guys through me okay. so uh, if i'm on is everybody amenable to oh mary i just had a, a again a question um yeah. and that was whether or not it because it, it appears to um give access to other parcels yep. of town land yeah um and that are fronted on a paper street and so yep. by giving that up, we might not be able to reach those other town parcels. And that's, that's just yeah. a clarification question more than anything, is whether or not that would um, give us a problem. So I'm fine with asking John to research that and make sure we have that piece of information and also find out um, if and when open space is considering the question so that we can get their, um, their determination. Anybody else? Yep. Yeah. Right. So we've, we've done some similar research in the past, and we call it due diligence. So uh, we'll, John will get that done for us. <laughs> okay. Can, can I ask one more clear? Just oh, on sure the, the drawings that were included, is every lot that's listed as town, is that, are those all I town assume owned? town owned. That was what I assumed. Yeah. What, why else? I, why I don't else know why else. I'm assuming that. I'm just surprised at how many okay. parcels. Boom, boom, boom. I know. Boom. Yeah. I, I just, I'm surprised at how many parcels there are that, that are owned by the town over there, considering hmm. it's kind of a. It's interesting. Yeah. Hot, um, yeah. So I guess we What's would like some more rate? information. I don't think that so we would necessarily lead the charge on purchasing it, but we might at least. Yale Road down here. Yes, or selling so, it. We might at least support this, other boards I think and committees the one that wasn't built on Paper Street. Although I don't know. Is there any, uh, through the chair, is there any history that we could re re relate to for this topic? Like, uh, I don't any So there, there are lots of times. I, I'm not familiar with any particular. I know there's history, and probably Elaine would be a great person to ask, or Mike Shepard in Town Hall, mm. if you had a few minutes, for sure. I know that we have very often sold off little, like, 
slivers of land that adjoin properties, like that, that happened for the Kistners mm -hmm. uh, right there next to the mobile that will now be that big, gigantic, couldn't live without it mobile. Um, and, you know, the town just didn't have any use for that little sliver of property. Um, but we held on to it until we did the Lumber Street in extension improvements into Elmwood Park just in case we needed it kind of thing. I don't know about big pieces like that, to be honest. But, you know, Elaine or Mike Shepard would be great people to start with as far as the history. And okay. I personally would be inclined for the town to keep it because it connects to the other town on parcels. Yeah, um, I think it's a, it's a good point. Yeah, and I also think that it's because of the, sort of the regulation of that area that it provides, um, as, as we are talking, open space, although that's not our jurisdiction, I just think that m more green down in that area um, provides, you know, a nicer environment. It's, and um, perhaps, you know, potential recreation space. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay, we'll get more information on that. So to answer your question in terms of timing, I mean, there is the ultimate timing of town meeting. We wouldn't be able oh, to Oh, right, it. right. It has to be a town meeting so. vote anyway, so we do have plenty of time. So let's, let's get a little bit more feedback from people. Thank you. Okay. Um, discussion of future planning board meeting locations. Apparently we are not being good neighbors here. Um, so in the parking lot, that it's is. It's been recommended that we move. Um, and Kobe and I checked out the library. The large meeting space is available and very nice and air conditioned. Uh, so to kind of jump on that opportunity uh, before everyone else does, I didn't know if you wanted to start scheduling meetings starting in September at that location, or the other option is the HCAM studios, but there's been some opposition to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I am very amenable to using the library. I'm not as amenable to the HCAM studios for my own <laughs> personal reasons, uh, just because it makes me cough. Um, but I would like to, if we choose the library, we should say each time as we schedule new meetings and as we close meetings that the reason we are moving is to try and encourage people not to park where we're not welcome to park in the Bills parking lot and to perhaps use St. John's or the side streets or street parking um, at the library. I, I worry a little bit being so co-located to this parking lot that we won't solve our problem, but I'm happy to, to try the library. I think that's a good idea. Uh, it would be the church space, the old church, right? The large room with that. That's that large yeah. room, yeah. Mm -hmm. That'd be nice. Okay. I'm very happy to do that. So why don't we, why don't we try the library and see if it solves our, our parking problem? And it's not just the parking, because they're going to be it fixing isn't. the elevator oh, as well. Oh, that's right. So we're going to have to move out of town hall except for the basement. Oh, my apologies. So it's kind of likely moving to a permanent location. Can HCAM broadcast live from the library? I've been told they can. Yes. Yeah, excellent. Um... Okay. All right, so, so I'll schedule the September 9th meeting for the library. For the library, yeah. How long is the the meeting rooms other than the basement going to be out of commission in town hall? We don't know yet. Okay. Okay. What is the uh, select board doing? Okay. So we are going to be meeting on our next meeting is September 9th, and we're going to uh, test drive the big meeting space at the library, which I'm kind of excited about. I'm not going to lie. Okay. So, uh, you have to come to the mic, and you may. When you uh, refer to the large meeting room, are you referring to the former church? Yes. Yes. Where they have the church windows and yeah. the religious sense. <laughs> so I just wonder if hmm. there might be some people offended mm -hmm. at going there who are not Christian. Because Thank you. There is a Christian. Yeah. Is there? I haven't uh, even. There is a Christian. Um, sculpture on the top of that building. Thank you. It's worth thinking about for sure. And through the chair, one thing to note is I haven't scheduled it with the library yet, so this may not go through, but <laughs> I'll confirm with the library. Uh, um, do how do people feel about the setting? I, for me, it was going to be lovely, but I get it. It's not for everybody. I thought we were aiming for the new function hall that was... That's you know, not the big meeting room, though, and we need a big space, right? I don't know. 
think that's what we're talking about, isn't it? Did, is it in the old, is the big meeting so you space? you walk into the entrance of the library, take the left, yeah. and then it's basically to Back the there. left. Can we meet past the library hours in that? So they've place? extended the library hours? Not till 10 o'clock though. Yeah, it's close So they now. told us that if we meet there, we would have to be responsible for the space after hours, and they would have to basically lock off everything but that access. And then when we leave, we would it would lock behind us, I guess? Yes. We, okay. So I think it's a valid concern about the religion, but I think it would be okay to try it and, and solicit feedback from that community if that's a, an issue. I think mm -hmm. it's been the library space for so long that I would wager a guess it's not consecrated anymore. So that would be kind of, that would be kind of interesting to look into that aspect too, the historical aspect, um, so that if anybody had a problem with it that could be confirmed that it's been a library for a really long time. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm amenable to staying and then if we feel like we need to move, we can move. We'll try it the first time September 9th, if it's available. If it's not available, will we try for the Senior Center? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. So uh, I just got to, I mean, as I think about this. Yes. No, definitely. We, we have this meeting room. We have this beautiful desk. We have HCAM here. We have um, space for the public to join in. Um, and if the only reason is that we can't park in the Bill's parking lot. It's for ADA. the next couple of months. We, do, we, don't, we uh, aren't going to be accessible. So this is We're going to have to do, temporary. we're going to have to move anyway. Okay. There's no elevator, yeah. so we have to invite everyone. We might, we might, to your point, elect to move back and encourage our attendees to not utilize this, the parking space next to us. Or if they do, have a slice of pizza. <laughs> or bring your pizza. <laughs> All right, for those, so for the sept hold on, September 9th, we, we are going to try the library if it's available. Okay, yes. For the, those viewing at home, uh, there is an issue with HCAM where there, when we come for our meetings, they have the cleaning crews there. Cleaning crews have their supplies in the elevator, and the elevator is the only way to get down into the meeting space because the stairwell doors are locked. Um, so we're exposed to the fresh, strong um, cleaning supplies, which actually d d does bother my eyes a bit and bothers some other members of this board more seriously. Uh, so. Either we can get them to do their cleaning at another time or get them to unlock the door for us to walk down, but still it's, uh, it's questionable as far as... Uh, so, so, mm -hmm. so can we just treat it as a temporary pilot and see how it goes? Because, I mean, to yeah. the points made earlier, yeah, we have to yeah. go someplace. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm glad to try the library. It's, one it's, of, it's a it's town building. And awesome. September 9th at the awesome. library. I just Looking checked the that. library calendar and it is currently not booked. <laughs> oh, but if we, act, if we act quickly. <laughs> yeah. Particularly as uh, the meeting spaces here are not available. Some of the spaces, it's going to be a premium. Up, yeah. um, okay, last, uh, last administrative piece is approval of the minutes of July 8th. Anybody, have any, uh, anybody willing to move that? I'm willing so, to move that. Second. All those, any comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. All right. So that is the administrative agenda that we can do at this moment. Um, uh, I am going to um, ask the applicants for the Whisper Way project to come up, come forward. So in fairness to everybody, because we're t test driving this new approach, I want to let you know that I've allocated 30 minutes approximately to this. So um, we hope to be able to get through the, the you know, detailed but quick introduction and really get into what you need from us tonight. Um, and if we can't do it in 30 minutes, mm -hmm. you are welcome to stay. And as we have time at the end, if we have time at the end, we will go back to it. Okay. Through the chair. Yes. <clears throat> There's a procedural uh, issue where they need to withdraw. They just need to vote on the withdrawal yep. and then the resubmission. Okay. Thank you. So, do you, do you need to request? Do they, they need to re request? It, so the request is before the board. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is vote on the request to withdraw <clears throat> the application that was before us for the uh, the uh, amendment to the special permit concept plan and the definitive subdivision plan. <clears throat> and this is being done specifically so that we can 
uh, re uh, re include more voting members of the board. Um, so it, I'll entertain that motion. I move Someone. to withdraw. I mean, accept the withdrawal. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. Second. Is there any comments? Discussion. Discussion. Um, does the math work the same way where we're now down one member? It doesn't work exactly the same way. We're down one member, it's just, it's <laughs> but it's but extra. that brings everybody back on. So Robert, for example, couldn't vote. I think that you weren't able to vote anymore. I'm not sure about anybody else, but it does bring the existing full board back okay. into the discussion. <clears throat> Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. And then um, now we can uh, entertain the new filing. And so because we're doing it this way, it's sort of an administrative vehicle. So um, the applicant will give us a quick detailed overview to bring everybody up to speed, who, uh, Robert in particular, who hasn't necessarily been here. Um, for the hearings and then hopefully we can get to the meat of this the subject matter that we need to finish for you okay. today. Uh, uh, Ron Nation, uh, Ray Greenwood, LLC, Coleman. Uh, Larry Green here is uh, the uh, landscape architect and uh, I'd like to have Larry kind of show us around the site best can. Show us around the site, Larry. Well, so good evening, Larry Green. WDA. I'm just going to take a second and just quickly describe the property and then just give a quick overall, you know, obviously landscape works kind of take holistically yeah. and then and then Liz can kind of, the engineer can talk kind of the, the infrastructure. So this property is approximately 40 acres in, in size and in, and I have to be honest, in reviewing my notes on this property, I was kind of struck by the uniqueness of this property, of the undulating topography, the glacial erratics, the you know, the, the, the granite outcrops, the, the variety of the topography, the variety of the plant material, you have white oak groves, you have beech groves, just a unique piece of property. And also within this property, you know, it had an existing trail system. You know, and it also had a, you know, has a, it's a butts town on land that has a trail next to it. So, th you know, this property almost lends itself to an open space development to, you know, basically the intent is preserve, preserve landscape features, preserve significant features, such as these outcrops, such as these significant trees. So. You know, the, the, the plan we have before you is basically this open space subdivision where we're really trying to preserve the landscape, you know, in, that, in meeting that intent of we're proposing the road predominantly in the same quota that the existing road is in to preserve, preserve trees, preserve earth disturbance. We're also incorporating common driveways, again, to minimize earth disturbance, to minimize tree clearing. So when people come home, it's, it, you know, not to sound corny, but it's, it's, you know, it's their oasis. You know, even the idea of incorporating a shared septic system so again, allows the the whole, allows the opportunity of minimizing land clearing around the house. So it's just kind of really trying to place the house within the landscape, you know. And, and even the, the open space itself, you know, this process, this property, approximately 40 acres in size. So this, you know, the open space be approximately 20 acres. But that 20 acres actually abuts you know, over 200 acres of town-owned land. So incorporating this open space, you know, in this one area, you get approximately 275 acres of town-owned land. So you guys have the opportunity of land preservation and a trail network of elaborating that trail network. So you guys have a, you know, an opportunity to do you know, something really neat or just preserve land. So I just feel like the, the plan before you is really, we, we really tried to meet the intent of the open space bylaw by preserving landscape features. So two seconds. Appreciate that. Um, I would also like to say that, um, that uh, it, the challenges lend itself to sort of a longer than typical list of needed waivers and they all have their <clears throat> arguments and justifications for why they're needed and, and how they help um, limit some of the land clearing for example changing the place where the, the existing road is to limit um, what ha the work that has to be done and the clearing that has to be done on the site so um, did you want to say anything else as we start um, no, I don't think so. I think Larry got it pretty good. Um, we, I think we've come a long way on the, um, on, the on the details with uh, with Fade, oh, uh, with Phil, um, and I'm just hoping we can make some real progress. Um, we've we've been at this a long time, and um, hoping that we can keep a full board and just 
to keep it as positive as possible. I agree. Okay, John, give us your your update or your. T so uh, it is substantially similar to the previous design. It's a 12 lot subdivision. Um, <coughs> uh, there's 10 lots uh, in the cluster off mm -hmm. of the Whisperway cul-de-sac, and then two lots coming from a common drive uh, connected to Wood Street. And then there's the open space surrounding those lots. <coughs> um, they've requested many of the same waivers as before, all of which except for two were granted. One of them was denied. Uh, that was for the frontage depth. They have um, revised the plan so that now only two lots require a waiver for frontage depth before it was eight. So they've fixed the frontage depth issue on six lots. Um, and they've, uh, some other changes that I don't believe were in the previous iteration were removing the stub connecting the adjacent lots to the, the one at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's an old plan. So that stub is gone. And provide, nope. Nope, down, down at the bottom. The, the other side. From Wood Street. That stub it's is gone. Correct? There's an, e there's an easement. Right. There's a revised plan. Is that is that the revised plan just showing an easement? That is not the revised plan, but it's extremely similar. But yes, there, there was the piece, the parcel was removed. Is this the revised plan that shows the lots as they are that don't need the frontage depths? That um, meet the frontage depths? I think there's, I assume that's in the package, in the, in the definitive yes. application. This render but, plan is not the one that shows that, but it, that, that is not the front of the depth is in the plan set. And so, so the stub on the on the definitive plan, we've got it as an easement, as a as a possible utility easement, underground utility easement. And uh, just for discussion with the board, if that works fine. If not, then. Uh, we'll oh. There you go. So uh, I, I just happened to to have. Um, the lot, the lot slide that shows the lot depths, um, that plan is the updated plan showing the lot depths. What page correct? is that? Oh okay. gosh, you're asking the wrong, not very technically savvy it person. Is sheet nine mm -hmm. of the plan set. Okay, that's page 59 of our package. Thank you so much. <laughs> so that is the most up-to-date plan. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, I don't know if this is relevant right now, but um, I was just going to ask about you know the the loop versus um, versus the cul-de-sac. Um, basically about the street. So <coughs> yeah, go ahead and ask about the street. So my my question, and this is really um, as a chance to address this because um, I think it's you know it it it's on people's minds of why doing a loop just with the pavement that you are showing right now including the driveways you know both coming from from both directions and the cul-de-sac why you couldn't just continue that street and make it a loop road it was the uh, well, the um, coming across having a loop road um, come down so well the loop road is 3,500 3, feet mm -hmm. long and um, the cul-de-sac is a thousand feet long. I understand, but there's so, a lot of driveway in there too. <laughs> there are. Yeah. There okay. are, but they're narrow, and each one serves two miles. Okay. Uh, so the loop road came around, uh, looped around, and came up back through here. Yeah. Um, the uh, DEP decided that they didn't have the, um, I don't know, like the eleventh hour. They decided that that uh, they didn't want to see stormwater within the buffer zone for the burn pool. So in order to make that this road work and, and, and have the water not be in the burn pool area, we would have to build the road up from Wood Street, uh, you, you, whatever the leveling area is, and then, and then climb up at 10%, 8%, whatever the maximum allowable um, grade is, in order to send as much water as we possibly could back to this area, out of the Vernal Pool area. So that road would be um, 
would be about 15 feet above the existing grade, and there'd be retaining walls on either side of it okay. to get the water to go back to go back to this area. Okay. So, so it just, uh, yeah, it, it just became totally impractical, very expensive, uh, not very attractive. Um, so, so wetlands and. And um, there's, you know, some preservation of some open space, a little less pavement, although it, you know, even though theoretically, just on paper, it looks like all you have to do is put a little bit more pavement between those two lots and you've got a loop road. Um, but you're just saying that well, in reality, the topography doesn't make that practical. Well, the topography wasn't, there's a whole, there's a whole range of things yeah. that make it Okay. But um, it, it can be done, but uh, it's, it would be extremely expensive. Okay. And we didn't do a, uh, we didn't do any of the numbers for how much paving is versus the, the road, uh, the loop road in 24 house lot, you know, individual driveways. But I, I'm, I'm quite certain that there'd be quite a bit more paving. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even though I mean, some of the some of the driveways would be long as, as it is, even off the off the uh, loop road. So. All right. I'm sure. Yes. If, just on that theme, Mr. Nation, can you? So, so what happens to all that water when there's a paved driveway in that same spot? Uh, here. Yes. Um, there's uh, detention. Uh, yeah. I think there's. And, and I guess how is that different from so the, the, the road design? That um, the driveways are, do not need to be um, treated to the same level as the roadways do. Um, obviously, there's a lot more traffic on a roadway. There's salting and things that um, there's just a whole bunch of regulations that apply to um, to the roadway and the stormwater that has to be done. For that, um, that doesn't is it just doesn't apply to a lot or a common driveway. So, so just in a practical sense, what happens to all that <coughs> water that we're trying to avoid going into the protected areas now that it's a driveway instead of a so road? So the, the conservation, as as we uh, permit each individual lot, the conservation commission will take a look at each of those. They may require uh, specific um, drainage. Uh, pieces for each individual lot and it'll get permitted in that in that fashion. <coughs> so it's allowable so the, through the Conservation Commission. So, so the water just runs into that uh, protected space that you're trying to avoid doing if there was a road there? Um, it's not exactly so there's it's a complicated site the, there's an existing there's existing pavement there um, that currently goes into that protected space. There's existing whisper way on the other side um, that's gravel and has complete discharge into the um, into the vernal pool right now. So if the commission's looking at it holistically, um, it's an improvement for the site and it's an improvement to that um, to that area. We're doing additional there's um, invasive species there uh, that we're going to clean up as part of this project. So while it, it could potentially get discharged untreated, um, it's unlikely that the commission will allow that. And, it, and even if they don't do anything in the lot, when we do the individual lots, they're already increasing the protective uh, the protective areas around the vernal pool with this submission for the, uh, the commissions requiring us to do a certain amount of, um, and, I, and I can't speak as well as uh, the wetland scientists can to the commission, but they're doing things to improve the area and the protections to that vernal pool as part of the conservation filing for the, for the whole subject. Okay. Um, I, 
I'm going to ask Phil if he would come forward and just um, run through, I know you've done a lot of work on this and there aren't too many open issues, but I think that there are a couple or maybe not. And I, th I thought that there still were a couple. Pass the T's and dot the I's. So uh, again, for the record, my name is Phil Paradis with Beta Group. We've been tasked with reviewing this for the, book, for the town. And uh, Ron is correct, and Elizabeth and Dan have worked on many nights uh, on this project and have uh, come a long way. And um, so we, we just have probably just a handful of issues that we, um, every, it seems like every step of this pro pro uh, project either raised another issue or whatever. So, um, so as, as, uh, as, so the latest issue that we're, we're still working with is the driveways. There's significant long driveways and uh, undulating um, uh, topography. Um, so, and they've, they've developed some profiles and sections. And mm -hmm. so there's, there's some aspects of it that uh, may cause uh, drainage uh, changes. They've mm -hmm. added some, uh, at least, uh, indications that they're going to put in some culverts. Mm -hmm. So we need some more details on that. We also want to make sure that the fire department is, uh, is, is able to turn around on some of these long driveways and come back. Um, so we, we would like to see that, that turning uh, uh, plan. And then um, there's some minor things like an O&M plan we just want to make sure that the, the um, uh, site distances on Wood Street are, are you know, protected, um, and then the map. Um, and then there's, there's just a culvert issue that I think we need just, just a, a technical meeting on, probably, uh, to make sure we can um, agree that it conveys the 50-year the storm event across the road. So, And there's a few conditions we'd expect to include. When we get to that, we can let you know. Um, you had also <clears throat> in your notes that it, uh, the SW24 you indicated was a subject that you <coughs> should probably discuss and decide. The SW24, which, you know, I should have taken better notes at what that was. Oh, yes. <coughs> uh, yeah. This as, as we've learned the hard way on a few of our projects here, uh, that, you know, challenging sites and, and, and soils, conditions that are not amenable to, uh, to rapid infiltration are likely to cause uh, challenges with erosion and sedimentation. Uh, so we just, um, we, we recommend that there be more look into that to make sure that you know only certain sections of the you know what happened what happened in uh, some of these other projects is they come in and clear the whole the whole parcel mm -hmm. yeah and it's just it's it's catch up after that um, mm -hmm. so we recommend that they put in their roads and then as they build each individual lot that they um, just so that they don't have to manage so much sediment okay so do it, sort of plan it out one at a time. Individually, yeah, or, or yeah, maybe a couple, you know, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but okay. not not the whole the whole. You're not going to be unreasonable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I gotcha. you know, obviously yeah, obviously it's a it's a business, yeah. and you want to be yeah. able to you know work on one and, and you know progress. So okay, but I think there's, there's, there should be some more thought that goes into that. Okay, and I apologize if you said it, and I was checking my notes and I didn't hear it. Is there an open uh, recommendation that we get um, the sewer septic plan? So um, that's going to have to be. So they, they've, I think they've kept all the sewer out of the right of way. Okay. Um, and so that's what the, uh, the, 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 su the sewer superintendent was concerned about. Okay. That he would have to manage it. It's a, it's a private system. It's going to have to be reviewed by the board of health. If they, if they, if they want us to help, help review that, we can. Um, okay, but it's not an open issue as long as they keep everything out of the right of way. Right. If the town's not going to maintain it. Uh, or have to, you know, it's not going to be. Be within careful there. about it, or right. Okay. So. All right. Um, <clears throat> so we have two waivers that are uh, we uh, are open. So I know all we'd the have waivers need to be revoted. Right. 
Right. But what are the two that we didn't approve? So the one was the frontage depth. Yep. And the other was... Uh, buffer. Yes. Oh, the buffer because of the spur. Because of that spur. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Yeah, and just to note, I made a few mistakes in the waiver section of mine. So, for instance, I don't think we need... <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, waiver seven is incorrect, and they've they've already added number eleven. So uh, I, I think I referred to it somewhere else too. But they've already asked for that, uh, requested it. So. so just for a point of clarification, the waivers that are listed in the memo yeah. are the current ones from Guerrero. The comments were not received from Beta because they were working on them. Um, yeah. So I just kind of slipped in their previous comments, which what? might be a little confusing. Talk to me about what page I'm looking at. Uh, of the memo, it is page eight. Thank you. So the waivers themselves are correct. The comments may be out of date. Okay, thank you. All right, so um, do, uh, first of all, I'm gonna ask for comments from the public, which is something we do at every public hearing. Um, we have never had the public comment on this, but I wanna just, See if anybody came from the public to comment on the Whisperway proposed plans. Okay, seeing none, we're going to just move past that. Um, do so. Board members recognize that we are looking at a slightly modified plan that attempts to address the concerns the board had um, the last time we were voting this, and it's a brand new plan. So we aren't reconsidering necessarily the waivers. We don't have to op reopen a vote. We're voting them all again fresh. Um, but many of them we have uh, satisfied ourselves about, and there are no changes to those. I believe so. Okay. Does anybody have any um, questions or comments? And I'll start with Robert. Questions? The just at a high level of all the all the waivers requested. Mm -hmm. The lot depth frontage is is it just not possible, or is it possible and it's impractical or too expensive what is the rationale um, I bet Ron could speak to that if you wanted to <laughs> so the lot So this driveway has to has to go well beyond this box. It just it, it just makes some irregular shapes in here for the normal use of the of the frontage in driveways. Um, and I know I'm not explaining very well, but it's a. Um, so. To the usable area for this lot. So that's five and six are uh, five and six are the ones we're looking for. So this so this box pushes pushes this property line out, pushes this driveway over this way, this one pushes this driveway over that way, and it, it just gets this house into a into a bad spot. It just tightens everything up when without that, without the box for the five and six. We have just something more, you know, more workable. The driveway isn't close to a house. So everything is packed, packed right in close up to this house. It's a point of clarification through the chair. Hold on one second. I'm going to let Robert finish. Oh, sure. Okay. It's the only question yeah. I have for yeah, right now. Good? Yep. Yeah. Go ahead, Frank. Mr. Nation, is, I believe, is saying that the initial plan meets the depth, but by moving things creatively 
and then what they're at what they're asking for it's to it's better layout the way they're asking for it at the expense of one house's being depth being shorter nearer the street two two, two. two. It's two. five or six yeah. yes and, and the, the, the frontage for those houses is not short the frontage is is still the, the required mm -hmm. frontage it's just the, it's the shape the kind so of spoon so the shape we don't have that we don't have the the, that shape for the front of these two lots, um, but the houses aren't. The houses aren't up here. The houses are, are going to be back there. Um, Another point that I think is important to consider that if if he w the developer was creating the road brand new fresh, um, he wouldn't be facing these constraints because he developed that that spine road that spur road. Um, in a way that worked better for him in this development, but in order to avoid redeveloping that road and, and you know disturbing more of the site, it's a, it's doing the best you can with the least disruption. I think is important to think about. Yeah, it's uh, then there's all this frontage here is is uh, you know right up against the town land. But it's 40 acres in their 12 house lots. So I'm just doing a time check. We have five minutes before we, you know, ask you to wait until, until we can come back to you. So I'd like to get around the, the board if we can to just see if there are any. I just, yeah, I, I had a question for the landscape architect. You talked about great groves of trees and um, very interesting granite outcroppings. And I'm just wondering how does this new plan preserve that? Basically, by, the, by ma maintaining the existing roadway and also by placing the houses not in these, in these significant topographic relief areas. You know, through here, you know, there's significant topography, so we try to place the house to, to preserve these. Can you show me specifically where those outcropping, outcroppings and where those um, groves of, of birch and beech are? Uh, so I know there's a significant outcrops through here, through the open space itself. Um, kind of over in here, there's, there's a lot of, in the open space itself, we preserve a lot of that existing vegetation. How are you going to do that within the, within the 40 acre development? How are you going to preserve some of those areas? Right. The yeah. significant tree growth. Basically, once, once we've, you know, as we, as we position ourselves away from them, and then if, then when we get into construction, then I imagine I'll be commissioned to do, to basically, basically flag those trees for preservation so the tree guy knows not to cut them down. And um, outcropping as well? Yeah, the, some of the ledge outcropping, you, you just don't want, you don't want to work on them anyways. It's just incredibly expensive and uh, the biggest is really sun Can you show me where they are? Um, so, here, here, so up on top, in the open space itself. I'm ta yeah, I'm talking more about the area of construction. There's a, uh, there's one outcropping right here that uh, that's pretty sharp. Um, it's they're, they're mostly there's, there's another one here, here, here. We can tuck the houses up to uh, right up to them, yeah. and and just but stay away from them. Okay. There'll be a feature in the backyard of the house. Okay. And they're and they've got giant oak trees poking out of them. Right. It's, right. it's, it's they won't, there, there's nothing else like this in Hopkinton with, with houses. Yeah, I'm sure. Kind of around. <laughs> I'm but, sure. But, you know, the septic system will be down here, so we don't have to, usually when you see these, now when we build houses now, the, the way the Board of Health regulations are, the, the groundwater is always at two feet or three feet or four feet, and um, the septic systems are huge. And you have to cut every tree, and, and we just won't have that here. That's really nice. I, I, I actually think that's a great effort that you're putting forward. But I do have some questions. Okay, so we're preserving the outcroppings. We're preserving some hey, of the yeah. cool trees. We, we have talked about oh, this sorry. for no, a just, long, long, long time. Oh. I just want to make sure that your questions gonna, are really targeted. And okay, I had to finish my sentence. So, again, I guess I'm wondering, with the wetlands, 
how how is that going how are the locations of the houses going to affect the wetlands are, are they going to be tilted enough or um, well we're we're outside of the buffer zone on all with all of the houses um, okay. uh, all of the houses but maybe um, this existing house lot four and that one's right on the edge of the so the, the wetland the wetland buffer zone is and here's an existing house. The wetland buffer zone is basically here. So all the houses are down down this way. Okay. okay. They're they're for the most part out of the buffer zone. We do have driveways, these driveways here go through a buffer zone. Uh, or this driveway goes through a buffer zone. But the houses themselves are high and dry. That was my question. Okay, thanks. Amy. I think all my questions have been answered since we reviewed this a few times and with the other comments. Okay. Gary. Um, just to follow up on Rob's question, um, if you were to comply with all of the lot frontage depth requirements for the lots, mm -hmm. how many how many homes could you build? If Same you would comply with all of them. What's that? Same number. Same number. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it, it's again. It's this. So this. So this box. This box pushes this. Yep, I, I get it. It just. It, it just. just makes yep. It just keeps tightening things up. Yep. And, and yeah. But but you can you can comply with the lot of the lot frontage depth requirement Absolutely. and still build twelve homes on it. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. I'm good. I, I appreciate the attention and the level of detail they always present. Mary. I'm fine. Dave. So question on the. The driveway lengths. So, is there a maximum, and there's no maximum? So, there has been just as a kind of side <clears throat> comment uh, that the fire chief and I have discussed uh, you know, casually about establishing a uh, a length, not a maximum length, but a threshold where then after that they would recommend sprinklering the houses. But there is no requirement for that. There is no maximum driveway length. And I believe he is sprinkling in the house, right? I don't, I don't know. Are you, are you putting sprinklers in the house? Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Are you putting sprinklers in the houses, or? Um, I've agreed with the fire chief to uh, put sprinklers in. Uh, well, actually, four of the houses. So uh, it'd be these, it'd be these two here, and these two here, and those driveways are are over 500 feet long. You can see this. There's a turnout here, so there has to be a, a, a turnout every 500 feet, and uh, so that's that's shown here. Um, I'm not sure. I think this one is right here, just to get pink in. And that's kind of like uh, the old uh, Wood Street, the original. Wood the fire chief is here. Are, did you want to say something? Want to throw in? Uh, so in the review, I was um, happy with the end product with the uh, four driveways that were developed. The, um, if I see this plan right, the, the um, one additional piece, the two lots that were kind of outside of what I saw to review before, um, my eyes are telling me they would fit into that same theory that we would add to into the sprinkler solution. So I haven't talked that through with Ron, but just from what I'm seeing on the go here. And okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We had agreed to two. Uh, oh, we hadn't talked about the other two, because, Chief and I, right. because those okay. are going to be in our lots. Okay. Right. So these got folded back in. So, okay. yeah, of course I know he's going to pull me. He's going to like the sprinklers for dish. sure. Yeah, right. That's never a bad thing. Okay. So, All right. perhaps yep. the fire chief should have stayed up there. Oh, but is there, fire chief, I'm sorry. Is there, a, um, is there a concern with these long driveways as far as uh, non-fire emergency vehicles getting up there, like an ambulance or a such so the plan that um, I looked reviewed demonstrated that the vehicles could travel the driveways on the fire side a long driveway challenges us if we're putting a supply line in for water or something like that it be getting more equipment in there becomes a challenge so for an ambulance I'm comfortable that the ambulance can access the the residents with the longer driveway they've done some efforts the whole package had to do with like letting out front or seeing the address good and 
you know, so on the fire side where the supply line might get in or getting additional equipment in, the, uh, the sprinkler system helps and he could still demonstrate on the driveways that um, through a, a different turning scheme that we could still turn around in there with the common driveways. So uh, there was a little bit of compromise back and forth. If that answers your. <clears throat> yes, thank you. Okay. And just one more question for Ron. The, um, I believe, John, that the minimum frontage is 100 feet for this? Uh, because I, th I think I just was looking because it's agriculture. Would you know, Ron, agri agricultural open space? I believe it is. So all, all of the um, lots meet the frontage? So I'm going to have to suspend the conversation, but I'm going to ask the board for a commitment that before we leave tonight, we vote the waivers so that we we know those firmly, okay? Um, and you're welcome to stay, or you're welcome to, you know, not. But, but Sorry, um, Mayor, I couldn't hear you. We do like what to, would the waivers? I'd like waivers? to commit to address the waivers. Address what, to vote on them? Yes, yeah, so that they know exactly where we stand on the waivers before we leave tonight. But I do have to move on to um, our phone call at 8.30 which is waiting for us, I'm sure. Yeah. So just so the board knows, we have one applicant for the growth study committee that is traveling and working and calling in. We're going to, we're committed to taking his call first, but we're going to talk about the process um, when he's on the line. Hi, Dave. This is John Gelsich, and you are on uh, with the planning board. Thanks, John. Let me know Hello, if everyone. you can't hear anybody. Dave, can you hear us? I can. Okay, so we do not hear you very well. I just saw two hands go up in the back with an exasperated look. <laughs> we're, we're working on the volume. <laughs> All right, how about now? Dave, it, can you say something? Can you hear me now? Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah, thank you. Okay, perfect. I appreciate every, everybody's patience. So um, just so everybody knows, I, I think the applicants for um, the Growth Study Committee are entering now. Um, they're, they're, I believe everybody is here. Um, one applicant, Dave Wheeler from Blueberry Lane, was not able to be here um, in person. So we have arranged uh, to have him join us by phone call. Um, Amy and I worked a little bit, uh, both uh, she and I are on the Growth Study Committee, we worked a little bit on process. So Dave, we're just going to talk about, uh, with the board for a couple of minutes to make sure the board members here are agreeable to the process we have, um, we are proposing, and then we will hear your um, comments after that. Great. Okay. So um, what, because we have, we have seven applicants for four potential spots. There are two spots on the committee proper voting slots and also two alternate slots. Um, those uh, members are uh, uh, welcome to vote if they are helping um, solve the, any quorum issues, if they are there when a, when a regular member is not. Um, but as a rule, the alternates would be fully participating members, just not necessarily not voting members. Um, we, uh, because we have seven people interested in four spots, um, we would like to propose that um, after we, we're going to invite each of the applicants to give us a short synopsis about themselves and why they would like to serve and what they think they would bring to the committee, hoping everybody stays around the two or three minute mark. Um, and then, uh, and then the board, the planning board would vote uh, each member would vote their top four choices. There would not be any secret votes. The ballots that we have created um, have the member, the planning board members, a, 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 spa a space for their name. Everybody needs to be able to access how the planning board members vote. Um, and then we hope uh, that the first vote carries the day and each person that is appointed has at least a majority of the members the planning board members voting. So our intention is that everybody who is appointed um, will have at least five votes, which may ne necessitate multiple rounds of voting. Did, did I do okay explaining that? So does anybody have any issues, questions, or thoughts on that? 
I just wanted to add that, so we would have to do a runoff if there were not candidates getting enough candidates getting majority, or if there were a tie, we'd have to do a second round yeah. of voting. So, yeah, so just one point of clarification. We yes. do a, if we do a, a vote off, yes. are we, would we still all be voting on the original members, or are we only voting on those candidates that are in the vote off? So I think um, it depends. For example, if in the first round of voting, and, and I welcome thought on this and discussion on this, if in the first round, say, we had two people that had at least five votes, they would be appointees. And then, potentially, our next round of voting would contemplate all the other candidates. I think that's the most efficient way. Does that, does that sound mm -hmm. amenable? Mm -hmm. Dave, did, are, were you able to hear that process? Yes, I am. OK. All right. So um, is that our process that we're going to do? OK, so that's what we're going to do. So Dave, because you're calling in from work, and I believe you have to get back to a meeting? <laughs> yes, I do. Huh? OK, so, so uh, you're welcome to give us your, um, your statement, um, and then stay on the line or not as your professional uh, duties require, OK? And we will let you know one way or the other. Great, thank you. So go ahead, Dave Wheeler, your, your name and your address and what you'd like to tell us about yourself. Thank you. Uh, my name is David Wheeler. I live at 37 Blueberry Lane. And uh, first of all, I wanted to say thanks for accommodating my travel schedule for work. Um, I really do wish I could have been there in person, but um, I do appreciate being able to call in and at least uh, participate in this process. Um, I guess I've lived in Hopkinton for around 13 years or so, and I've, I've seen a lot of growth in the town. And I've seen and participated in quite a few town meetings where, uh, you know, there's a lot of discussion around how we should manage that growth, um, what growth is good for us, and what growth is bad for us. And I do think that um, this growth study is a really great step so that we can start looking at different um, scenarios and assumptions and choices that we might be able to make and how we might manage that growth to be uh, consistent with our town values, um, the character that we all love about our town, and in keeping it a place where people want to live and raise their kids while still maintaining uh, the services that we provide, um, but also allowing for that growth to happen. Um, I was quite interested in this committee uh, because I do, on a professional level, I consult to clients around uh, planning applications and planning systems and processes, forecasting um, scenarios around different sets of assumptions and, and really helping our, my clients to um, make data-driven decisions about their future and understand the possible implications of those decisions whether that be financial or um, you know, professional growth for, for, for people. And I do think that uh, I'd like to bring that data-driven mentality to the town around understanding um, you know, the different scenarios that we're looking at and just being um, very well informed so that we can make the right decisions for all the constituents in the town. Um, so that's, I guess, my statement. I appreciate your consideration, and I look forward to, uh, if, I have any, if you have any other questions, I'm happy to answer them. Okay, thanks so much, Dave. I think that we, we decided we just don't have time to interact with questions because we have seven uh, candidates. Um, I think that you um, did a great job with your statement, and I, I think that you could feel free to uh, rejoin your work commitment. Um, or stay on the line if you want to hear other people's statements. Uh, thanks. I'm going to actually drop off. I do need to get back. Thank you, though. Yep. Take care. Okay. Bye. Um, so I think that we're just going to, just because we started at the W's, we're going to go up to Wilson St. Pierre. Are you here? Yes. Come on forward. Um, and you were here to hear the outlining? I was. So just give us your okay. top level. Yeah, I'll give the, uh, the, the short synopsis I wrote up for John. But uh, my name's Wilson St. Pierre. I'm a uh, roughly seven-year resident of Hopkinton. Um, I live on 22 Huckleberry Road. 
I'm applying for the at-large position on the Growth Study Committee because I believe I have the kind of public and private sector knowledge that can help the team develop a sound plan of action to manage Hop Hopkinton's growth. I started my professional life as an active duty U.S. Army officer. During my two year long combat deployments, I trained and led U.S. and Iraqi, Iraqi soldiers along the Syrian and Iranian borders. I left the Army uh, with an honorable discharge and returned to my native New England in 2009 to get an MBA at Boston College. While there, I worked at a small investment banking firm, building financial models using a mixture of public and private data sources and gained a better appreciation for the needs and challenges of local business owners. After gradu graduating from BC, I joined Fidelity Investments, and I'm currently a director there within our investment product group covering international equity strategies and contributing to our environmental, social, and governance innovation team. As such, I'm familiar with current debates around responsible growth, place-based investing, and environmental stewardship, as well as some of the funding mechanisms for community development. Um, my wife and I have two young sons and a vested interest in seeing the town manage its future growth effectively. Um, I look forward to an opportunity to join the team. And uh, just two addendums, my primary personal issues about the town that I'm the most interested in are obviously the schools, uh, as our sons are four and six, and the I-495 uh, <laughs> project that's yet to break ground. Um, and You're on Huckleberry? Yes. You're yeah, not going to be able to imagine. come and go for about 10 years. But. <laughs> right. So those are, those are my primary issues. But I love learning about um, policy at large. So whatever topics come to mind. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for your service as well. Thanks. OK. Uh, Tim Brennan. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tim Brennan. I live at 151 Spring Street in Hopkinton. Um, I was. I, I come to you here tonight uh, after having a brief discussion with um, Chuck Joseph at a call I was on. I work for the police department. A little bit about me, um, I worked at, I, I couldn't afford college, so I got a job at Bentley College in 1987, um, <clears throat> working for the police department. And then I started to get more into working as a police officer there and got more training, and more, more uh, rank, and kept working up. And, as I did that, I went to school there for free, which was the primary reason I went there. And I got an associate's in business administration there in 1991, and then I got a bachelor's degree in business management in 1994. Um, while I was at Bentley, and I spent 15 years there, I got really involved in the school. Um, got involved with uh, different boards and departments and training for students, sexual assault training and work study students and things like that. Um, there were some problems with some fraternities and sororities, and I stepped in on boards to deal with those issues over the years. I really enjoyed getting involved in the um, academic areas of the college um, and stepping away from the, the law enforcement piece of it. Um, by the time I finished my degree, I didn't know what else to do, so I just stayed in law enforcement. Um, I came to Hopkinton 17 years ago full time um, as an employee, and I've been living here for 20 years. Um, out on Spring Street. My wife and I um, built that house and we're gonna be there three years and we're there 20 years later. My wife grew up in town on East Main Street. Um, she is a, a townie as they call them. Um, she's lived here her whole life except for when she went away to college. And um, my mother-in-law gets very involved as some of you may know, Jane Moran with the town. I recently was able to get onto the day shift. I'm the day shift sergeant and um, I heard about this committee and I thought that I could bring value to the committee as I've seen tremendous growth over the last 20 years as a resident but also as a police officer and in the, in the field of public safety for the police department and my brother and sister's sister across the street on um, the fire department and the growth that has taken place in both of those areas. Um, I think we're at a, a, a point in, as a town that we have to um, really study and, and try to maintain and, and manage the growth of the town in a way that is healthy for um, all its residents and the, the town is becoming much more diverse than when I started here 17 years ago um, and, and just to, to make sure that we don't grow too fast. I've seen towns in the 495 belt that grew really really fast and had some significant growing pains and I think we can we can as a town um, not share those growing pains if we are able to manage this properly. Um, 
it will be a learning point. There'll be a lot of learning, I'm sure, that, that I will learn on this group as much as anyone else if I'm chosen. Um, but uh, I have three wonderful children. They're at the same age as Dave Wheeler's children. Um, we're very good friends. And um, there is, a, there is a, a point in my life where I'd like to make sure that they can finish out their career as a, in, in the schools here in a very productive, positive way and um, not be crunched in classrooms with 50 people to a classroom and, and other things that have happened in other towns that have had the growing pains that we could experience if we're not careful. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Sundar. Thank you so much for this opportunity. My name is Sundar Sivraman. I'm a resident of 20 Carriage Road. Um, I've been a resident of Hopkinton since um, 2006, December. So this is high time that I contribute towards the town's welfare. So that's my uh, main pitch for you know, getting into this growth committee. Um, I've seen firsthand um, the major growth happening in terms of legacy farms and other things happening in the town. And I feel that I can bring some perspective um, and um, contribute um, to uh, a furthering of the growth. Now, professionally, um, I'm a, uh, I lead a team of uh, data analysts at uh, CVS Health. So I do uh, deal with data on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, uh, my, my background is otherwise in technology and engineering. So I do feel that some strengths can transfer to this role as how we operate. Uh, from a you know, process and bringing some rigor into this, um, in, into all our deliberations. Um, I also have a, a management sciences degree from Harvard Extension School, so I can bring in some core strengths. Uh, those are my core strengths that I can bring in. Um, <clears throat> what I've seen in, in this town, what took us to this town, was uh, the beauty, the, the, the landscape, and the, the running culture, the exercising, uh, and it, that's what keeps us going in this town. That's what keeps me going in this town. Um, what I want is for that basic character to stay as is. I think that's what keeps this town what it is by its very DNA. Um, we, at the same time, we do want to partner with the, you know, the growth, uh, everything that growth brings in. Uh, we've seen um, you know, modernity in terms of restaurants and new library, um, libraries coming up, new school. So there is that healthy balance that we need to strike between growth and preserving the basic um, you know, DNA of this town. And I think the Growth Study Committee can um, play a huge role in, in striking this, this balance. And I feel that uh, at once I'd like to be part of this, but that's the basic mandate and it's a, it's a huge responsibility on this committee and I want to be part of that. Thank you so much. Sure. Michelle, Michelle Murdoch. Hi, um, my name is Michelle Murdoch. I live at 53 School Street, and I have been a Hopkinton resident since 1994. So I've been here about 25 years. Um, many of you probably know that I um, was previously, I should say, a writer with the Hopkinton Independent. I'm no longer doing that. And uh, that's part of my motivation for applying. I really like covering government. I've been very involved, and I'd like to contribute now in a different way. Um, during my <clears throat> almost 15 years with the Independent, I covered primarily Board of Selectmen, but I've also done lots of planning board coverage, budgets, um, municipal government. I've written about very many issues, and I've not only covered them, but I've lived through some of the stuff that's been happening growth wise in Hopkinton during that time. Um, in addition to that, I have two volunteer experiences with Hopkinton. I was in doing the communications for the 300th anniversary committee, which involved a lot of community outreach. Um, I was also the vice chair of the charter review committee. And um, that, that was fun to do. I mean, some people might have not considered it that, but it, in a way, it had a lot of the same similar challenges as this committee has. Um, it's seeking input from the community and listening to people. Um, it's being able to clearly communicate what you find out. And um, there was a lot of data analysis also involved with that as we looked at surrounding towns and the ways people were setting up their charters. 
and things like that. Um, so as I said, I, I'm looking to stay involved with government. Uh, I feel that I have a lot to offer. I feel that I am more familiar with town government than the average resident uh, due to the reporting that I've done over the last 15 years. Um, and I would consider myself a researcher. I'm great at digging for details and researching facts. And due to my writing skills and what I've been doing, uh, I'm very good at making complicated things easily understood by the average person. So I think that's another skill set that I bring to the table. Um, and I would also like to say, I mean, people have talked about, you know, growth too much, too little. I would come into this with no preconceived ideas or opinions either way. I think that uh, the committee is being put in place to sort of look at and see what needs to be done. And there's a lot of fact-finding that's going to be required. So I'm, if appointed, I'm looking at this with an open mind and looking forward to seeing what the, what the results show after people do all the research. And in terms of uh, my background, um, I have a BS in Marketing and Economics from Boston College and an MBA from Suffolk University. Thank you so much. Thank you. Shahadur. Hello, <clears throat> my name is Shahidul Manan. I live on uh, 274 Ash Street. Uh, thank you for giving the opportunity to speak and considering my application for this role. Uh, so I think it's pretty evident that we are going through a huge um, growth over the last five years. Uh, the number of houses grown over 1,000, the number of residents grown over 3,000, and certainly we are seeing the impact across the board on our services, be it on the DPW, on the schools, the class sizes, as well as on fire, police, and all the other uh, areas. So it is a very critical subject um, and critical matter for the town's future. So I'm very uh, happy that we are having this thoughtful committee to look into that and assess the situation as well as come up with recommendation for our future. And I think that's very timely. So thank you all for that. Now, in terms of my qualification, I served at the Appropriations Committee for almost five years now. And uh, I have been involved with the budget uh, at a very detailed level, working with all the service areas, working with all the problems that the growth has brought in, as well as the opportunities. And uh, certainly the growth has um, included a lot of new revenues, almost two million per year, which we directly need to balance the budget and keep up the services. So it's a complex uh, equation that we need to solve when we are talking about managing the growth. But coming back uh, to my qualification, I've been uh, working with the budget, so I know a lot about uh, how our budget and the growth and all these can be tied together. So I can certainly help and contribute on that with my thought leadership as well as my data-driven approach. And on the professional side, I've been involved uh, managing large organizations, building out large um, budgets and strategy plan for uh, Fortune 100 company um, organizations. Uh, currently, I serve as the head of um, uh, digital innovation and uh, data analytics uh, at uh, Partners Healthcare and um, manage a large organization and, and a budget to plan out their uh, analytics uh, roadmap on the engineering and innovation based on uh, healthcare, which I uh, thoroughly enjoy. And I think all these combined, I can bring that um, town budget experience as well as my corporate uh, leadership and strategic planning experience to contribute these, um, uh, to contribute to this uh, committee and uh, add value to it. So I um, humbly ask for my um, candidacy. And on the personal front, I have two kids. My elder one is heading to college, thanks to the Hopkinton schools. He's been through a, a very good education, and I'm proud of that. I'm proud of our school. And I have a 10-year-old um, who has years ahead, and I hope to uh, get the same quality and maintain the same school um, um, excellence for her. And that's also very much motivational for me for this uh, committee and for this work. Now, with my candidacy and my qualification, I want to be completely transparent and also disclose that uh, this afternoon, I learned from the town clerk that I have been um, uh, reappointed and extended for the 
position at the Appropriations Committee, which I'm very thankful for. And I also learned that um, based on the rules, I would not be able to serve as a member at large, which ideally would, um, and um, of course, uh, would prevent me to serve as a member at large. So as much as I am um, excited uh, uh, for this membership and excited for the opportunity to contribute in this manner, I would not be able to serve as a member at large. But the reason I'm here is to express my interest, to express that I can add value, and to help you understand uh, that this is very dear to me. And having said that, I also want to propose that I think there is an option that you might consider, and it's entirely up to you how you have uh, structured the, um, this growth committee. I think it's an excellent uh, committee structure, but you may consider adding um, appropriation committee lienzo to the committee, which would give the opportunity to have a budgetary perspective added to the committee insights and the thought leadership. And provided my uh, colleagues at the appropriations agree to nominate me, I could be able to serve um, through as a liaison from the committee. And certainly, again, uh, I, I think I bring a lot of value, and I think the budgetary aspect of this is very important. So I would uh, request to consider that aspect as well. And that's, uh, that's pretty much what I wanted to say. Thank you for the time. Thank you very much. Pravina. Okay. Hi, my name is Praveena. I'm at uh, 36 Huckleberry Road. Uh, we lived in uh, Hopkinton for almost 10 years. I ha my kids were born here. Uh, they're growing up here. My oldest is going into middle school and I have two twins in elementary schools. Um, I, as Hopkinton continues to grow, I have vested interest in making sure that the character and the charm are retained in Hopkinton. Uh, I have an engineering background with analytical skills, and I love solving problems. Mm -hmm. I would like to give back to this great community, um, and that's why I'm here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, and that is, that concludes um, our uh, candidate statements, so we're going to move on to voting, but this is the perfect time to remind people that if they do not, this is, we, we find ourselves in a position of having um, a really nice problem to have. We have a lot of really invested, wonderful, capable candidates and not enough spots for them. Um, and there are an awful lot of uh, volunteer opportunities in town, so if this particular opportunity turns out not to be yours, um, please, please, please c consider another opportunity in town. One that we know is available right now is the Zoning Advisory Committee, a really terrific way um, to help the planning board um, and town meeting uh, in a, the, the long-term planning arc. And it is a perfect committee for people who have a lot of experience and also a perfect committee for people who don't have a lot of experience because all perspectives are very, um, very appreciated and very valuable. Um, so th at least certainly consider the Zoning Advisory Committee um, if you do not get appointed to the Growth Study Committee, but I know that there are probably a great many other opportunities out there. Um, and I would like to also take this opportunity to thank everybody who put their name in. Um, we, we sincerely appreciate it. Um, so. With that said, um, we have the opportunity to vote, and we're going to uh, vote our top four candidates. If any candidates have five votes or more, um, they will be able to be appointed. And the, certainly, if we, if everybody, you know, everybody, <laughs> the top four all had more than five, we're done in one vote. Um, and the top vote getter, I think, will. Top vote getters would be the active members on the committee, and the next two would be the um, the alternates on the committee. Okay. Can I just add? Everyone yeah. has to be sure to put their name on the top of the form because the yes, votes, votes are not secret. There. And it, it sounds like, from what Shahidul said, that he would not be eligible to accept an at-large seat, so we shouldn't 
Cross yes. Yeah, we should. Oh. I'm we sorry. Should just cross his name no, out. No, 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 no. I thought he meant that. So, so, so tonight, we would not be able to vote for Shahadul Manan because he is a member of the Appropriation Committee. Um, there is a discussion that we might have whether or not we want to add a seat for the Appropriations Committee, and I would also suggest, um, and probably not tonight, but at uh, we should also consider um, a seat for a school committee because <coughs> that was brought up at our first meeting. Um, and it is always nice to have um, an odd number, but I know we, th we, we contemplated pretty thoroughly the size of the committee, so I think it is a, it's a discussion point that we should have time for. Um, so yes, we cannot appoint Shahadul tonight. We do appreciate that you came, and we appreciate your um, enthusiasm, and we sure wish we could um, utilize your expertise directly. Um, that being said, these meetings, all meetings are open and anybody who has enthusiasm and uh, talent to share is welcome to attend and your input will be um, considered thoughtfully. That makes it a little bit tougher though. <laughs> no one said it was going to be easy. We'll let John. You? Oh, you want to pass it? Oh, pass it to know. me. Sure, pass it to me. Here we go. Do we have a blank one that we could use to tally? Oh, that's a really great idea, oh, isn't it? I put one on the screen, so I know there's easier on. So if I just tell you? Yeah. Okay. Or I, I wish I'd play another blank one. <laughs> but we have blank ones over there. I'm going to grab them. You could, yeah. Here, okay. But she's going to read them out loud, I think. Oh, she has some. I'm just going to use one of the blank tallies. Four or just three? Count up our votes. I don't know. Can you use a tally to tally? I'm going to use a tally to tally. Thanks, Dave. All right, has so everybody voted? Top four. In no particular order. All right. <coughs> Did you? Yeah. I have a four-way tie, so oh, no, I'm I, good. You know, okay, all right. Just uh, actually, people could take a small break if they want. What? What's your? Like Gary could tell me while you read or something if you want. Yep. With that. While I read what? You gonna read them off? You gonna read them or just do it? Oh. You gonna read them off and I'll tally. Um, okay. So we have a vote from Michelle Murdoch for Tim Brennan and Wilson St. Pierre. Oh, that was Frank. Was that just three? Yep. I thought you should pick top four. I, yeah, I, I four, had a tie. Frank, Frank okay, had a okay. tie. Okay. With all the rest. Uh, Mary voted for Pravina, Michelle, Sundar, and David. I don't think I have any duplicate names. Dave voted for Michelle, Tim, Wilson, and Dave. Uh, Deb voted for Sundar, Tim, Wilson, and Dave. Robert voted for Michelle, Tim, Wilson, and Dave. Uh, Amy voted for Pravina, Michelle, Sundar, and Tim. I voted for, Muriel voted for Pravina, Tim, Wilson, and Dave. And Gary voted for Michelle, Sundar, Tim, and Wilson. Okay. So um, our first, I guess we first place finishes. So, so Tim Brennan with um, seven votes. Okay. Um, second place would be a tie with six votes each for Michelle Murdoch and Wilson St. Pierre. And then our fourth place uh, would be uh, Dave Wheeler with five. Uh, Sundar with four and Pravina with three. So we did it in one vote. No, we well, no, we, we have we our we have, we have a tie for second, second and, third. and third. Okay. So we've just got to decide who's so, going to be the at large and who's the alternate. So Tim is definitely an at large. Yeah. And Dave yeah. is definitely an alternate. Okay. Can we do a voice vote, Michelle and Wilson, for the uh, for the, the thank you for putting that out for the full member? Is that amenable? Mm -hmm. Because we have two people who tied with six votes each, Michelle Murdoch and Wilson St. Pierre. Um, so the, um, 
if you uh, favor Michelle Murdoch for the at-large versus the alternate seat for the at-large seat for Michelle, go ahead and raise your hand. One, two, three, four. And if you favor Wilson St. Pierre for the uh, at-large seat. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, I didn't see you, thank you. Um, so that makes four, is that right? Do, no, we have only eight Although people here, right? So four, um, Wilson St. Pierre, we might as well formalize it. Um, one, one, two, three, okay. So, um, so for the at, five to no, five to three, oh. right? Oh, I can't see everybody. Sorry. I know, I couldn't see everybody either. Okay. Is that, am I correct, John? Five to three? I think it was Amy, Gary, Frank, Mary, and Dave. Okay. Michelle, correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. So congratulations to Tim and Michelle for the at-large positions, and congratulations and many thanks to Wilson and Dave for the alternate positions. And thank you very much to everybody else. Who applied and please do contemplate um, another opportunity we'd love to have you um, working for the town all right nice ah uh, next meeting all those who have been appointed at, at large or alternates um, have to be sworn in by the town clerk before the meeting if you would like to vote um, we will be organizing at that first meeting and also going over some of the initial action item work that we talked about at our very first meeting. Um, the meeting is Monday night, August 19th at 7 p.m. in the town hall basement. All right, I think we did it. Thank you very much. <coughs>so Madam Chair. Yes. We've got a lot to get through. So we do? Do we? It's going to be a continuance. Okay, it is? Yep. Okay. So um, our next item is the continued public hearing for the Wood Street Commercial Photovoltaic Solar Facility, much like the Whisper Way application. Um, but for different reasons, they are requesting to withdraw. So the first thing I'd like to do is entertain the motion, a motion to with, for them to, with, to accept their withdrawal. So moved. Second. Um, is there any questions or discussions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Um, I should have said the reason is, is because their first filing wasn't completely correct. So the next filing is more correct, but essentially exactly the same project. And um, so they ha do, that we have opened the hearing and they have requested to continue to September 9th or beyond. Yes. What does the agenda look like for September 9th? So they are already placed on there, I believe. Mm -hmm. I'll check. Uh, it's pretty full, but they already do have a spot. But we could switch them. We could. Um, Let me open that up real quick. Yeah, that would be great. That was bad. Yeah. I have to remember to drive to the library next month. So September 9th, we have 76 million <coughs> Aspinock Woods, Eversource Pipeline, uh, Eversource Scenic Road, 223 Pond Street, Scenic Road, uh, and Elmwood Farms Amendment to a Definitive Subdivision Plan. What's our so next? Not on here yet. What's our second meeting in September? Twenty-third. The date. It's gonna be the twenty-third. I, I recommend we push them out to I the twenty-third. They had a slot. Yeah. It's before we get started again. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna entertain a motion to move the continue the um, commercial photovoltaic solar facility at Zero Wood Street to September twenty-third. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Quick question. Should we be setting a time like 8 o'clock or something? We're not setting like, times. I know, I know they're all starting at the same time. We're not setting times, yeah. They'll, we'll, we'll order them up. But should um, you, should, shouldn't we say a time for people to show up? 
they have to show up at 7 30 7 30. okay so yeah. we give that as a time yeah we don't give the beginning of the meeting as the time that's the beginning of the meeting 7 30. but we don't need to say continue to at 7 30. no okay yeah i don't think so no they because don't. the agenda the notice tells the start time okay okay so next on oh uh, I'm going to recommend that we go back to um, that we uh, entertain John Westerling's two um, subjects now. Okay, come on forward, John. Um, we're going to start with the Legacy Farms, Farms North bus stop. Good evening, and thank you very much for entertaining my two items. You're Earl. welcome. So Legacy Farms North, just as a recap, has an issue um, because it is not an accepted road. It's a very um, big formal road that we have invited people to use to offload traffic. Um, and we have a concern with a lot of young children uh, trotting down and queuing up for a bus way at the end. Um, having seen it in action myself, I have a further concern that because of the dynamics of the bus, path that they have to use. In fact, the traffic does not stop on Legacy Farm, Farms North when the children are queuing up, um, so they are whizzing by um, lines of little teeny kids. Um, and for further complicated, um, the neighbors have responded in uh, by carpooling down there, but there is really no place to put a car safely anywhere down there. I also found that out for myself. Um, so one of the suggestions that we proposed is, a is out of the ordinary. Um, but is uh, finding a way to accept the road um, with the conditions um, on the master developer. Um, so it would be a little bit out of the ordinary and we did ask Mr. Westerling as the uh, DPW um, director to weigh in on that idea. Through the chair, good evening everyone. That is a highly unusual suggestion and just my initial reaction is that it would not be in the best interest of the town. Uh, there are too many elements of the construction that have yet to be completed. Um, and through that construction process and through the completion of those elements, many other elements can, can arise that we may not be able to anticipate right now. And that would put the town at great risk for carrying construction costs, contingencies, um, I just see that as, again, initial reaction is that it would put the town at great risk and I would recommend against it. So unless we had a contingency fee, can you tell me what the cost is for the typical cost for a road like it um, once it's accepted to the town to maintain it annually? Initially, the costs are lower because we're looking at probably just winter maintenance. Mm -hmm. Uh, but as the road ages, as um, construction infrastructure elements start to fail, uh, which they all will over time in spite of how well they're constructed initially, as the pavement degrades, as potholes show up, the town will have to continue to put more and more effort and time and money into that. But initially, it's, it's fairly low. The, the biggest cost initially, again, is the winter maintenance. So ball parking that road? Couldn't even ballpark it. Sorry. You can't ballpark a road in town. A ballpark the cost snow, of snow removal, snow maintenance. How many storms? Uh, so how do you how do you how do you estimate for the town? You have, you have to estimate that for the town for all your roads. So we uh, we estimate the manpower required and the equipment required. Yeah. I don't know that that would be an extra piece of equipment, but of course any piece of equipment that's in that easterly part of Hopkinton would have to take on that additional length of roadway. Okay, oh, that helps me. Okay. Um, anybody else have questions? A question to the chair. Yeah. Um, to the chair, will you be um, uh, plowing that sidewalk? How do, how do you determine which sidewalks to plow and which ones not to plow? Uh, th through the chair, we have a list of roads now that we, that we plow and those are concentrated around the center of town and the routes to school. Um, we don't have any plans right now to have those sidewalks cleared. Thank you. Mir, since I'm starting this way. Um, 
I guess I was just uh, wanted to address the, the, yes, there's a lot of costs involved, but in terms of just taking it on earlier and then perhaps is, is there a way in your mind to, to have um, um, money set aside in a bond or whatever that would address your concerns that you were saying? Because I, I, you know, I'm really thinking of the, the weighing the issue with the children and how long it's going to be before the road would qualify in our normal sense of accepting a road. And I, you know, that's a long time in the future, potentially. So is there a way to set aside money to estimate things like that? So through the chair, I don't foresee how we would accept the road now without town meeting approval. You can't. So town meeting approval. So there's the next town meeting that I'm aware of is next May. You can call a special town meeting. That's been proposed. So, so my that would be the that would be the formal mechanism for yeah. doing it, but you're correct. So my recommendation would be to have the developer complete the construction because there's not a lot left to be done there. There's top course of pavement, there's probably top course of pavement on the sidewalks. There's loom and seed, I think, for all intents and purposes. The water infrastructure is complete. The sewer infrastructure is complete. Have the developer complete the construction elements to a point where we would typically accept it at town meeting. And then if we have the town meeting, annual town meeting next May, or if there's a special, then we can look at that. And then in that situation, because there is a lot of construction activities there, I would recommend that we have some sort of a contingency set aside because there's lots of heavy equipment up there and we wouldn't want a brand new town road right. to degrade due to the weight right. and uh, the, the traffic of that heavy construction equipment. Totally agree. Thank you. Frank. Um, I went by, checked out that property and it's August and the roadway uh, grass area between the sidewalk and the road is where people park and it's all torn up uh, quite a far bit up, up the hill. Um, I, I appreciate uh, <coughs> Mr. White, uh, let's call you White Temple, um, the DPW head's uh, comments, and the risk is uh, too great to the town, uh, and I understand that, but we're kind of looking at a number <coughs> we could ex attach to that risk, and that's, that's kind of what we're getting at. I'm sorry, the chair, would you repeat the question, please? We're looking for a number we could attach to the risk. We understand that there's a risk. We've Priceless. seen it. We've seen it in the history of the town, smaller so developments. Uh, but this is a larger envelop, uh, development, and there's different issues going on, uh, safety issues, and that we're looking for an answer that we could help. I, I see the developer is very eager to, 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 to say. Yeah, you, wait. you have to wait. Um, so maybe if, if you guys got on the same page about that, that would be useful to our board. Through the chair, there's, a, there's an existing bond for the remaining construction costs, that's a great start of how much is left to be completed there. But it's just a start. And then you could add in 20% for unforeseen problems with construction defects that, that were not caught during inspection or problems with the infrastructure elements that have degraded over time. Thank you. You're welcome. Just one comment. Um, I think we've gotten your input. Thank you. I'm going to suggest we move on because we have a lot to get through tonight. Yeah, we're going to get to the rest yep. of the board and then we'll move on. Yeah, I think um, I'm glad to have Mr. Westling's um, input. I think we, there are also parallel processes that we could pursue and other options, I hope. But um, mm -hmm. it's good to hear your perspective. Um, Thank you. I, I would concur with that. Yep. That's been said. Nothing else to add. I totally awesome. agree with the costs to, and the risks. Awesome. So yes, to everybody's point, just to comment, um, I do think that um, our efforts here have spurred conversations elsewhere to pursue solutions. Um, I'm happy to say that the town manager, assistant town manager, um, and the chair of the select board have all um, sort of weighed in with me in conversation that we would like to find a solution um, and uh, hope that you know something that is a little unusual and uh, different and maybe more challenging isn't necessarily the one we have to land on. 
and, and through the chair, the, the, the safety of the children and the parents that are waiting there is of paramount concern, and that needs to be weighed against the risks to the community and the town. So I will tell you that I have a very strong opinion that two years of knowing that this problem exists, and I, this, this is not directed to you, Mr. Westerling, is too long to wait for this town to get invested and in concern for the safety of those kids. And it should have not been us, and it should have been two years ago when they first brought it forward. But um, I understand that we have to weigh everything in a balance, but a bunch of little kids and many, many, many more to come over the years um, is currency I'm not willing to, to spend. Um, and we need to find a solution. Thank you, though. Yeah. All right, Scenic Road. Scenic Road, thank you very much. Through the chair. Uh, this is actually a request that came from a resident who travels uh, Fruit Street and Saddle Hill Road very frequently and there is a sight distance problem when you pull up on Saddle Hill Road to the intersection of Fruit Street and you look to your left which would be to the south there is no visibility whatsoever so this is a request because uh, of Fruit Street being a, a scenic road request for the removal of nine cherry trees to improve the safety by increasing sight distance to the southwest no walls are being removed or altered and the trees are marked with a white X and uh, notices. There are two six inch cherry trees, two eight inch cherry trees, one nine inch cherry tree, one 10 inch cherry tree, one 12 inch cherry tree, and two 15 inch cherry trees. And I provided uh, to the planning board a locust map showing the general location of where those trees are to be removed. And then if, do you all have the photos? Mm -hmm. yeah. So the photo with the number one in the upper right hand corner that is the, the view that you get when you look to your left at that intersection. And you can see that the sight distance is blocked when the vehicle is stopped at the intersection. If you creep forward a little further, picture number two shows the adequate sight distance when the vehicle is pulled out into Fruit Street, creating a dangerous situation. The next photo, number three, is that dangerous situation created when you pull out into the intersection to gain adequate sight distance. <coughs> The DBW vehicle is uh, at the location that had to be uh, stopped at to gain the adequate sight distance seen in picture number two. And the front wheel is about on the intersecting line in the, the edge of Fruit Street. So a full two feet of the vehicle is out into Fruit Street. Um, and then I had provided also a sketch showing the it's actually a photograph showing the nine different cherry trees that would be cut and then the DPW would do a gentle scraping of that slope just to provide sight distance down the roadway. Okay. Uh, anybody have any questions? Oh, yes. Uh, there is definitely a problem there and it's been there for a while. Uh, the road dips so it's not just the trees, it's not just the, the, the earth that's there, it's the way the road dips down combined with how fast people come over down Fruit Street over the bridge, uh, either they're following ways or they're speeding to work, trying to get your drain. Um, people drive too fast there. Uh, you do have to pull into Fruit Street in order to take a right, and you can't see otherwise. Uh, I'm not totally convinced this is the solution. Um, because when the trees are taken down, there's still the issue of people driving too fast and also uh, the way the, the streets curve together and it's kind of like the side of a bowl, you still can't see over the ridge. Um, and um, I, you've marked the trees very well, it's very clear what, you, what your plan is. Uh, I hope it's enough um, and I hope that you spoke to the property owner, uh, Brad Finn, Finn. The abutting property owner? Yes. Yes. Uh, I have not yet. Okay. I, I just but looked that up. It's not owned by him. It's, it's, it's a small parcel that's not owned by Mr. Finn. But it's also in the right-of-way. The trees are coming down. Right. No, I know. Sure, sure. For the chair, the, the trees are all town trees within the right-of-way. Right. Yeah. And they're right on the road. I mean, definitely. Mm -hmm. it's I gaze at them every day, mm -hmm. many times. Mary? I agree with this for the purpose of safety. Yeah. All set for this, but a, a related but unrelated question after we're done for the DBW. I gotcha. Okay. Gary. Okay. Amy. Okay, so this is my point, yeah. too. That, um, 
So the property owner is Rebel Hill LLC, which seems to own the golf course too. I know that they're in the right of way, but it just usually when they take down trees, we ask, could they put replace some trees further back from the road? Is that a possibility on this lot? It's very small. I thought the golf course was on the other side. It is, but it says it's owned by the same entity. Huh. I don't know. So through the chair, just so I'm clear, uh, if I'm looking at the, the locust map, so the request is to replace trees on that southerly side of Fruit Street? Uh, I wish I could show you my screen. May I approach? Yeah, sure, please. Southerly side, yes. Southerly side, yep. That's yeah, so this is, this is the little sliver where they're yes. on the, and it's owned by the same people that own the golf course, apparently. Mm -hmm. So is there room further back on that property to put some more trees not in the right of way? And would the property owner be willing? I don't know. Through the chair, I'm happy to have that conversation with the abutting property owner. Uh, and we can look at whether trees would be the appropriate item or uh, shrubbery of some sort to provide block. Um, but if I'm looking at this correctly, it looks like it's only 38 feet. Is that R2190? Yeah. But uh, there, this is approximately 110 feet worth of tree clearing. Okay. So it would, I would look at how many trees are in front of that 38 feet and how many trees are in the, the remainder to try to provide a buffer for that house that sits in the corner. Let me offer this though for consideration. Not too long ago, the golf course property on the other side inadvertently allowed for all those trees to be cut down. Um, and it might be something they would consider replacing on that piece of property that um, that they were originally fined substantially for cut, let, allowing them to be cut down and then were forgiven those fines. Mm. So it might be that, that stretch on the other side of the road that used to be the golf courses, it's two homes, it would, it would have to be the homeowners, but the golf course might be amenable to helping the town replace some trees in that stretch that's now blank in front of those two homes on the uh, opposite side, uh, more on the they, side with the golf course. They cut trees, Madam Chair, across the street from here? They cut trees uh, where those, those two, two homes are? Lots, those yeah. two house lots. It was all treed on a scenic road. Oh. And those trees came down by a developer that was going to buy the property oh. that is Chapter 61, a protected property, fun fact. Um, and they were down before they uh, noticed hmm. the town. Um, and they didn't, they it, perhaps rightly did not uh, end up paying any fines. But there might be a way that they would be willing to reclaim those trees with the town. It's worth asking. Mm -hmm. It's worth asking. Might I, want, might I suggest one other option too? Is on Saddle Hill Road on the opposite side of the road. There's big gaps of no trees there. So I mean, if we do want to plant a couple of trees, we have no place for them. There'd be a perfect spot for them. No, well, she's I was talking Fruit Street in front of, Street, in front of those houses, I'm talking but about he's Hill. talking Saddle Hill. I don't know. It's worth it's suggestions worth asking, and it's worth holding the town. Um, as accountable as we hold other people to mm -hmm. replant some trees too. So if it's possible, that would be my preference. Any, Deb? Yeah, I just want to make sure that no walls are going to get disturbed or um, or changed or altered during this process. No. Okay. Rob? Yeah, this, this street is, uh, I travel every day to and from work. Um, it's definitely, high, I would call it a high risk intersection. There's no lights, there's not, mm -hmm. um, people, Drive it like it's country road, but it is a lot of, carries a lot of traffic in the morning. I see any improvements to improve safety as good steps forward, um, and if we can have the right conversations to minimize environmental impacts, all the better. Sure. Um, okay, so if you wouldn't mind, uh, I know that you uh, don't walk on water, although you're probably pretty close. <laughs> but if you wouldn't mind just letting us know through John if there is a possibility. Um, to replant some trees and what the possibilities are, that would be um, very much appreciated. Through the, um, through the yeah. chair, is, is the preference to first replace the, the screening that those trees provided for that house on the corner? So uh, I actually, I feel like that house is very screened, but I think that they would be the first person to ask if they wanted more trees, since they are essentially losing the trees in front of their, on the, edge of their property does that I mean I think that only seems fair I wouldn't be surprised if they I assume but it's the golf course right well there are two, I guess some of the trees are on this other property yeah oh so 
if it's the golf course, that translates pretty neatly to either along Saddle Hill on their pro their along their property, or along Fruit Street along what was their property. If the homeowners even wanted those trees to be planted there, I have no idea. They may love not having trees there. You know. We we empower the DPW, don't we? I listen. You're getting a ton of of empowerment here, right? Uh, it would be nice to have some trees back if it was possible. So, I'm, so that I'm clear, Madam yep. Chair, that the preference is on the southerly side of Fruit Street, and if not, across Saddle Hill Road is the second priority? It, to the, that's fair enough. To the east? Mm -hmm. yes. Along the golf yeah. course? I mean, that's where there are fewer trees. Yes, okay. definitely fewer trees. Yeah. And it's been a few years that they were sort of taken down. It's been, it met, has what, been a few quite years. Quite a few years. There's, there's an Italian saying that said, make it nice and nice. <laughs> make it nice and nice. Um, I have no idea. I, I don't want to send you on a, I mean, I don't think this board wants to send you on a wild goose chase either. Um, if it's possible to do, it would be great. If it's not possible to do, uh, I think we get it. But okay. Thank you. The chair. One traffic question. What, yes? Would it be possible to put like a mirror uh, so people could see as they're coming over Fruit Street, if there's someone on the side of the hill, as saddle, someone on the side of the hill could see someone coming over Fruit Street? There is a utility pole there. Through the chair, uh, the utility companies don't typically allow us to post even a sign on their on their poles, but we can look at if that's one of the one of the requests of the the planning board. We can look at installing another signpost with a with a mirror on. There's it. occasionally accidents there. I don't know how deeply it ranks in the uh, top ten, but uh, I think the accidents there are pretty serious enough when you see them uh, that it might help. The situation. So, so yes, if you could get that information, that'd be great. May I ask my related but unrelated question? It'd be uh, real quick. Is it part of this public hearing? Never mind. Oh, no. <laughs> it's, 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 it's trees on Fruit this Street. Public hearing, but then let, let, ask your question. Go the ahead, the question me. was that the um, further down Fruit Street, trees were tagged very similarly for the utility company removed. And they removed all but the one of the tag trees. I was just curious why they didn't remove the one blue tag tree. Through the chair, is that one of the blue ribbon trees? Yeah. Not blue ribbon is in first place, but there's a blue ribbon tied around it. Uh, I can reach out to Eversource and find out why they didn't it, remove that it was one. Pretty, it was dead like all the rest of them, so just an FYI. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, uh, for the purposes of uh, approving this request, we need to determine the degree to which the proposed work would adversely affect the scenic and aesthetic values upon which the scenic road designation was originally based. I think we're comfortable that um, that, that is not a big issue. The necessity for the proposed work in terms of public safety, welfare, or convenience, that has been the case that has been aptly made. Um, compensatory action proposed, such as replacement of trees or walls. Walls doesn't fall into this. We did talk about trees. Um, I think we have a, um, a pretty fair expectation about the probability of getting trees, but it's worth asking. Um, the availability of reasonable alternatives to the pro proposed work, which could reduce or eliminate, it, uh, eliminate anticipated damage to trees, and there really is not an alternative in this case. Um, and whether the proposed work would compromise or harm other environmental or historical values. Um, I think we're comfortable with that as well. Um, did we ask for public comment? We did not. Thank you very much. Um, I will do that one second. I'm going to read the last uh, condition. Consistency of the proposed work with previously adopted town plans and policies. Um, is there a public comment or question on this um, tree removal? Uh, seeing none. Thank you, though. I really appreciate that. Okay, so uh, I will entertain a motion. It's a special permit or what? A scenic road permit. Entertain a motion to approve the scenic road permit. So motion. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Quick Madam question. Chair. The previous uh, meeting with John, we didn't ask for public input. Do we want to do that? Because I think the developer had some input or? I, I, we can, uh, that's fine. I don't want to open a can of Before one. John leaves, do you want to come up and tell us what you think about the, the road acceptance 
idea versus any other idea for the buses, I was definitely going to ask you, but if you, yeah, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, as far as the cost of plowing the road, I know that specifically because we've been plowing it for the last couple of years, uh, both north and south. The north road, John's right, depending on the winter, bad winter is higher. So it ranges somewhere between thirty and thirty-five thousand dollars a year to plow the north road. Now I will say that we also plow the sidewalk in the winter time, and even though the town is plowing the south road, we plow the sidewalk on the south side because the neighbors really want it plowed, so they're going to walk on it. So the LOA has been paying for that. So we'll probably continue doing it in the north road even when it's accepted. Um, the one thing I'll say about the north road, we we offered to pave that a couple of months ago. We were told that they didn't want to have a special town meeting that we shouldn't do it, so we didn't. Uh, that road, between raising the manholes and paving that road, that can be done in the course of about four or five days, so it can be done relatively quickly. We have a current price in the road because we did price it two years ago, and we just priced it three months ago. I will tell you to put that road in is about $160,000. The sidewalks are finished. They were finished in the beginning, so there's no, no other coat to go on those. There is landscaping to be complete, which is really too hot this time of year to be doing it, so spring would be the ideal time. So if the town wanted, we could pave the road now, or we could wait and do it in the spring, or we could do it next year, depending when. Uh, I will tell you the bond, I've just been texting back and forth in my office to find out how much the bond is. Between the landscaping and the paving, it's about uh, $400,000 worth of the work to do. The bond currently that the town has, I was shocked at how much it was, it's $776,000. So it's, it's almost twice what the cost of the work to be done is. So I think from a bonding point of view, you're more than secure. And I'm open to either paving and now paving in the spring whenever you'd like to do it. I will tell you, I've also been having ongoing conversations with some of the selectmen and with Norman Town Manager about this whole bus issue. And it's amazing and we've both talked to many bus companies, no bus company will drive on a private road. I don't know why. We, we even offered to buy them additional insurance. They weren't interested in doing that. Some of them have a misnomer. They think, well, how am I going to turn the bus around on a cul-de-sac? I said, you don't understand. It's a full through road. The other thought we've had with the, with the selectmen and town managers, maybe there could be a small 20, 30 person private bus that could run through the neighborhood, pick the kids up and drop them off where all the parents park now. So we're actually looking into that option. Not ideal, but it is an option. So tell me again, where they wait now, yep. a small private bus. In other words, if, if there were a private bus that drove through the neighborhood to pick the children up, brought them down to that spot, rather than having 30 cars there, we'd have just one bus dropping the kids off. My guess is probably a couple of parents would want to be there I've had this conversation with Pulte and with the town, and we're now exploring getting some pricing on doing that. Now, okay. whether we can get that done, I don't know. Okay, so two I questions. I probably will know within a week. Is the cost. And the other question I have is why wouldn't they just take them to the schools? Sorry? Why wouldn't they just take them the whole way to the schools? Well, because that's not really what they do. It's, the bus wouldn't be big enough. In other words, the bus would probably have to make two or three runs to bring the kids down. I see. I think it's like a... 15 to 16, 18 person bus. It's like so a it's like a be, shuttle. They'd still be waiting on a road that the where the traffic does not stop. But you'd shuttle them down so the cars wouldn't be there, which is an improvement. The cars yeah. down there is a is a huge hazard. Well, it's a big improvement. Yeah. Um, okay, so you'll know in a week if that's possible. All right. Um, I have a question. Um, would you contemplate uh, covering the cost of maintaining the roads? For if we if we were to pursue accepting the road, would you cover the cost of winter maintenance until we finish it? Yep, absolutely. Anybody else have any? Because that solves the bus problem. Yeah, and the bond is more than adequate. Um, so I don't necessarily disagree with you, but I, I think that that's open to um, input from the professionals. But thank you. Yeah, that's good to know. Perfect. Thanks. Thank you again. Oh, one more question, Roy. Um, some people are worried about the cost of the special in town meeting, which I don't think is huge. Would you I'm cover sorry, the cost? I, I Would couldn't you cover the cost of calling a special town meeting? Of course. Okay. Thank you. Okay. 
Huh? What's that? <laughs> I should have asked how much is that? Uh, One I, million dollars. <laughs> so, come on. So uh, I don't want to lie to you, uh, Mr. McDowell just asked how much a special town meeting is. I think it is less than $5,000, um, but I don't want to lie to you. Uh, you know, I would, want to, I would want to find out for sure, but it's not a huge cost, except it is an impediment to, you know, the town to... to More than happy to pay. All right. Um, okay, next on the agenda, somebody help me out. Yes. Um, two points. Yeah. Uh, the public hearing for the scenic road, I believe, was not closed. Thank you. Oh, Kobe. Kobe reminded us, didn't she? Don't move. <laughs> um, I would <coughs> like to entertain a motion to close the public hearing on the scenic road. I so appreciate that, Kobe. You don't mind. Second. second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Really appreciate that. And the other thing yep. is Mr. Petrosi may have a request. Um, say it again. Mr. Petrosi may have, a, may have, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but he may have a request. Mr. Petrosi, he's up next. He's up, he's up next. I'm sorry, you know, uh, no, Petrosi. Petrosi. Mr. Petrosi, right behind back. you. All right. Sorry. Different developer. Okay. Yes, sir. I was running late, so uh, I'd just like to request a continuance to the... Oh. I know you're bored. You are just rising so high in my oh personal I, I hope it pays off. <laughs> but uh, John and I talked about uh, the 23rd of September being the next. All right, day. and which would push your decision dates to the 30th of September. I'm getting a yeah. little bit better at this yeah. game, right? So well, that's you're, okay with you're amenable to that? Yeah, obviously. fine. All right. Great. That's, that's fine with me, and I think it's fine with the board, but let's take a vote. Okay. Um, I will entertain a motion to uh, continue the Buckland Road hearing to the 23rd of September and the decisions in, involved to the 30th of September. Maybe you can arrange for me to be a little earlier in the night. <laughs> <That's very much. laughs> <First>. <laughs> um, it's a fair trade. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I have lost my agenda, Gary. It's just, <laughs> it's just gone. Trails of Legacy Farm. Trails. Trails. I'm sorry, Trails and 97 South, South Street. Okay. So um, the trails and, then, and, then and we're Legacy go Farms. Back to yes, and then we're going to do the waivers. the waivers on Whisper Way. The trails. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got to do that. Okay. And we're going to be looking at the money. Out quickly. <laughs> Yeah, I do too, but <laughs> all right. Welcome. Thank you. So um, this is uh, the new public hearing for the Trails at Legacy Farms to amend the approved site plan and amend the master plan special permit. Um, I am happy to hear your presentation, but we have advice from our town council that they have not had an opportunity to look at the work that you have sent us. Um, so I know that we are going to need to wait for their input. Um, so it's your choice if you would like to introduce it to us um, or if you would like to um, propose continuing. So Madam Chair, yes. a of clarification. So yes. in this is in relation to the red line decisions that were sent to us on Friday. They haven't had a chance to review those. So they, they recommended that the board withhold making a decision on those decisions until they have a chance to review them. Uh, the site plan itself, there can be discussion. Yeah, there certainly can be discussion, um, but um, I do know that if those red lines came in after our deadline and we haven't had anybody review them. So I know we're gonna have to wait for that input. Do you wanna introduce it? This, mm. Yeah. Yes, I think we need we need to go ahead. We okay. We have a significant time your... issue. Uh, our okay. project has been on hold uh, for about nine months now. Yep. Uh, because of the affordable unit issue. Yep. That uh, this board is, I think, very well aware of. Yes. Um, I think it was in January where we first heard that we would no longer be allowed. Uh, to have affordable units yep. at the trails. Um, our zoning required us to have 10% of the 180 units. That was passed in May of 2018. Our site plan was approved. 
and along with that approval came the obligation to build 18 10 percent affordable units on site and earlier this year uh, we understood through no fault of anybody that uh, the state would not approve those affordable units if located on the trails because of a, uh, a restriction that was in the zoning that said that people under 18 would not be allowed to reside there. And in um, town meeting in May, I think it was Article 36 was defeated, which would have lifted that restriction. Uh, fortunately, Article 37 passed, which gave us at least a solution to the affordable units, um, which I believe gave us the uh, opportunity to either deliver those units elsewhere in the town or uh, make some payment in lieu of the affordable units. And the way the affordable units work, for every nine units that we are granted certificate of occupancy, the tenth needs to be an affordable. So. We now are in a position where we can't build the affordable units at the trails. And we went back to see how we could make this work. And I think we've come, come up with, uh, I believe, a, a minor modification of our existing special permit. Our roads are not changing. Um, all, we were do all we're doing is changing the configuration of the buildings. Uh, we did have simplex, duplex, and triplex units. Initially, we still have them. We just have a different number of them. Um, we went from, if you remember, I think I mentioned this several times in the hearings leading up to town meeting, that the triplexes, of which the original plan we had 21 of, those existed only because we had affordable units. So 18 of our, all 18 of our affordable units were going to be in uh, those triplex units. And once we were dealt a, a different situation and not being able to put those affordable units at the trails, uh, we, that really nece necessitated a, a, a redesign of our site plan. So we haven't changed the roads, we haven't changed the area that the buildings are located. We've just changed the number of each um, the type structure. We went from 31 singles to 62. Uh, we went from 43 duplexes to 49. And so there's two increases there. And then the significant decrease was the triplexes, which went from 21 to 5. So <clears throat> if you do the math, that's a decrease overall of five units. So this amended plan before you is for 175 units. Um, again, we think that all the engineering drainage calculations that work for 180 units obviously would work better for a less dense project. Um, the original plan had these 21 triplexes spread evenly throughout the community because we needed, <coughs> you know, as a, a, when you have to do affordable units, you have to do them in, uh, <clears throat> in proportion to the market rate units. So we had them spread out, sprinkled throughout the entire, I think, 44 acres of the site. Um, so basically what the proposal before you is just to really change the number of units um, down by five and the configuration between the tries, duplexes, and simplexes. Okay. Um, I have my engineer here. You could quickly, briefly go through the, the plan um, and I believe the Peer review engineer is here as well. And I think all that work has been done. We're on actually on hold right now and have been 
since because the of the, spring? Because of the affordable housing payment yes. needs to happen, right, before you get... No, no, oh. we're, we're kind of on hold because there was... We didn't know how this was all going to come out with yeah. the affordable units, so we were concerned because of the design we had, we were concerned whether we should really go forward or wait until we got some resolution um, at town meeting on where the affordable units could be built. Yeah. Um, again, we always anticipated that they would be built on site and that option is now not available. Okay. It has to be done off site. So it really required us to take a good hard look at at the site as it was planned because it was planned for affordable units. And now that the affordable units are not going to be built at the uh, at the trails, we had to really look at that because again, those triplex units only existed for affordable units. Okay. So um, until you get your new. Uh, slightly modified <coughs> um, site plan approved, you're on hold. It's not really on the hold payments. And the payments will happen <coughs> when they happen. Okay, like, I was just clarifying. Yeah, we're not going to change that at all. Okay. When we get to nine COs, the tenth one will either make a payment or okay. produce a unit elsewhere in town. Okay. So that's unchanged here. What we do have is we've been at this now for uh, almost a year. Um, it was last fall when we started construction. We started marketing and we have seven units under construction, but they've been under construction now since about February and we haven't started anything new. And we have buyers yeah. because we've been marketing and many of those buyers are buying units that we cannot start until the amended site plan is approved. Okay. Because moving buildings around creates a little bit of a sort of a chain reaction and other units, even though they may not have changed much, they change slightly. And if you look at this, uh, we have a plan that shows, so-called red line plan that shows the original plan and anything that's changed. And there's a significant amount of units that have changed that we can't start and meet closing dates with yeah. buyers until this modified plan is is approved. Okay, I'm going to go so to the, the dilemma. Principal planner for comments. So the plan itself, uh, there weren't very many comments from Beta. I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, they're just complying with Article 37. Um, the design review board. Approves or recommended approval uh, of the design. Um, so, just in kind of a sense of process, um, it seems like it's a lot of legal discussions that need to happen in terms of the written aspect of the decision. So, if there's any chance that the board can get the site plan I'm figured out and understood, and then it's more of just an approval at the next hearing uh, with hopefully all the legal information worked out by the attorneys uh, once we get the comments from the town council uh, specifically some of their questions were they wanted to flesh out the affordable housing component a little bit further um, and then there was a uh, question about the restricted land and how they were going to approach that uh, and then that was just off the top of a quick review of the proposed red lines so there may be more comments uh, in that but in terms of the site plan I think they've pretty clearly explained what the changes were. Could the okay. chair can I make a suggestion or a question to John? You sure can. Is it possible that we can approve tonight with contingent on uh, legal approval? That may be difficult because if you look at the decision itself the site plan decision that you would be amending there's a lot of changes that need to be made um, and I would not feel comfortable okay. giving that advice. Just putting it out there as an option. If you don't feel comfortable, I'm fine with it. I'm without it. Any other questions, Dave? Mary? No. No questions. Frank? Um, we're just getting some of this data today, and I haven't seen Beta's remarks, so um, I'll check my email now. 
I th- it might sent, have. I sent it Friday. Fridays, okay. Um, but uh, these things are due before Thursday or Wednesday of last week. So this is a point of clarification. I was delayed in sending them yeah. uh, the information, uh, so they actually turned around the responses right. to beta. I read your comments about that, but still, it's the red lines. However, were received on Friday. So I mean, I have like questions about this stuff that I really need to look at and and see Phil's comments. So I haven't done that. So uh, I'll, I will ask Phil for his. We'll just go around the table. I just want to say we saw this in detail at design review and we think it's actually an improved layout. It's, the things are a little bit spaced out better because they've removed some of the units. So in general, I think the layout looks fine, but we have to wait till the legal uh, language is final. Thank you. Yeah, I, I too feel it's an improvement in spacing and um, I don't think we should hold them very much longer. Uh, so it was my, maybe this is for John. My, it was my understanding that Osmo had a maximum number of units in total. By reducing this five units, does that allow for five additional units to happen in, in the Osmo? Technically, yes. I don't believe there's any proposal for those five units anywhere. Go ahead. Okay. Answer that. The reality is, we're capped how many units we can do, and everything is spoken for, so there will be no additional units. Okay. So it'd just be a, pl- a straight reduction of five. Straight reduction. Okay. So I guess here's my question. Is there a way to work around so that we can continue with our process and not subvert it and they can make progress? I don't see a way without modifying the site plan decision. That would give them a new site plan decision. So yes, we, you are, we already have an approved project and we have a permit. And what I've done is I've taken units and I've slid them around and fit them better into the landscape and we've reduced the density. And probably the most important part that we did was we, we took all the roof water and we in, were infiltrating it back into the ground. So we've taken out another portion of storm water that yeah, wasn't even being contemplated the, before. The so the way I saw it was that we were doing this kind of an administrative review because we already have an approved plan and that I didn't realize that the decision was going to be that drastically changed because honestly I thought we were substituting plan numbers and I'm shocked because we put a great deal of effort to get to this point tonight with 10 sheets and all the engineering being done. I thought it was really going to be a plan substitution. And administratively, yeah. it was going to be an easy decision for so you. This has been, <laughs> and, I, and I don't think, I'm, we're not, I'm not arguing with you. I think from your perspective, I would have thought the same thing. This has been a little bit tangled just because mm-hmm. um, it's a problem of sort of nobody's making or everybody's making, and we're trying to find our way through, and it needed a town meeting vote to, to give us our direction. So it's been a little bit difficult from the start, um, but I think we all are nodding along with the fact that you know, the design review has, <coughs> sees it as an approval. But all of the comments in, yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, Mr. Barbier. Yep. Yeah, uh, a couple of points. One, I think, was Richard. The road was exactly the same. It's just kind of shifting houses and, and changing the style of the houses. We did meet with the design review board group, uh, who I believe it should have sent you a note, but basically they signed off on it. Um, the existing permit allows for some minor, minor changes then I would suggest that you have the right to say a minor change if we gave you the numbers of units that we would look for building permits on and you accept the location of those units as a minor administrative change that lets us proceed with those building permits while you continue the rest of the review. Uh, It was sort of what I was looking for. I don't know if that's possible or supportable by the board. I mean, I, we don't necess- we, we have no um, connection to holding you up further. We understand that this has been complex and time consuming and problematic. Um, so I don't, I, I don't know. Is, uh, I'm just curious, and, uh, yeah. and I'm not saying this is the proper pathway, but is there a possibility of even us giving some initial straw vote in a sense, um, and then you would continue, but at your own risk, assuming that we would okay. we would finalize it at a later point in time. And I, I don't even know if yeah. that's an option either. So what happens with us put, putting the buildings in where they're shown here is we actually survey in those locations. So I can assure you they're going exactly where they're shown on the plan. 
What I can't do is assure you they're going in accordance with the previous plan if I for us to follow the one that we've given you. So I think that's the most important distinction. If you could make that one, that we uh, and we've referenced exactly the sheet that we're replacing and where those units are, and they're shown on this plan. So we're really taking those two sheets that are the first two red line sheets. If we follow that pattern, we get the project we've presented to you. That's that's what we really need to accomplish. So. In the process, just question, John, is it the red line they need to review or is there a legal document that's associated with the housing issue? So the, the red line, as I understand it, the red line is modifications that they want to make to the permit itself. And having legal town council review that is critical to getting the correct decision that, they can, that the, the building department and the applicant can act on. And, and what kind of time frame is that going to is that going to take for the, so that they? They can said they could get me comments back by the end of the week. Okay. But our next meeting is September 9th. Yeah. So, so I mean, there is a possibility of holding a planning board meeting on the 26th, as it was regularly scheduled for this alone. Make it quick uh, to to clarify that point with the attorneys. I mean, we didn't have a lot of time to talk about it because. They got it sent to them on Friday. They had to look at it, and then we talked this afternoon before end of business. So it was kind of like looking at a high level uh, of the, the permits themselves and seeing what needs to change. I would be amenable to meeting sooner if we could get a quorum. Or we can get it's it's a simple majority, right? Um, I believe for the master plan special permit would be two thirds. So we would need at least six people. And all of them would have to be in favor, and it's August, and we committed to not having that second meeting, but it would... I can do it next Monday. Next Monday is the Growth Study Committee for two of us. Okay. But it could be at a different time. It could be at a different time, but earlier is... I'd like to make a comment, and this is just in general, not specific to this case directly. Uh, the speed of the town is the speed of the town. We have to have materials in front of us when we have our meetings posted, not after. Regardless of how that happens, we need to have time to review. We need to have, hear back from our town council on things. We need to hear back and read and understand. I have questions about this I would love to ask in the future. Um, but sometimes we just need to take our time and review things the right way. Thank you. Um, so I, I just want to make a point for the public that this is a this is a, a unicorn and not a horse. Um, this is a situation that had gone through an exhaustive set of public hearings, and um, these changes are mandated by forces beyond the applicant's control. And we have some ownership in helping problem solve in a in a proactive, productive way. Um, but I absolutely agree with you that it is important to be thoughtful and do our due diligence but I do think that we have really done that on this and I know that we have some information that we still have to have um, so I am more in favor of trying to get a meeting if we can get um, the requisite number of people um, what so, go ahead I was just gonna ask because I, I mean it seems like the 26 yep is a Yep. I'm just curious to go around. So, I mean, yeah. I'm available. Are you available on the 26th? Yeah. Yeah. To be all raise your hands if we're available. Um, Through the chair, question about process. Did you say yeah. simple majority was six or five? <coughs> simple majority is five, but it needs a super majority, so that's six. Oh, it needs a super majority. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Yes. You're available on the 26th. I apologize now. That's a, it's okay. Nobody was planning on it. Yes. 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 Nope. Yes. 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 One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 So then you need all six, right? So here is what I recommend. You work like mad to make sure that you and town council um, are in violent agreement on all the wording, right? Mm -hmm. So that it's really straightforward when we see you on the 26th at what time? Well, man, miss Discussion, Hold on, please. Stop. No. Discussion, please. No. Um, it's a planning meeting, and that's a, it's a verse of people who've been elected on this board don't, make don't me have ask a say. You to leave. Um, I won't. Oh, well, you might. Um, okay. 
What our meeting for growth study committee is at seven. On the nineteenth. Oh, that's that's the week after. Oh, oh after. many thank yous. Yeah, no conflict today. Yeah, no, we did. Many thank it. yous. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. My vote. My. Through, my, through the chair. My attempt, yeah. at, my attempt at the 19th. If, before. if yeah. we do move forward with another meeting two weeks from now that Frank cannot make, can he ask his questions now? Yes. I will absolutely. It's after yeah. 10 o'clock. I have to wake up at 6 a.m. So when am I going to sleep? I'm up at 5. Um, okay. I'll see and, you we'd night, and we'd like to get done. So um, I am motivated to try and uh, proceed with this for a lot of reasons. There's been a lot of work that's gone into this and I am going to entertain a motion to continue this public hearing to seven o'clock on uh, a seven. Okay. Sure. Seven. 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 Yes. Seven. Sure. Seven o'clock on uh, August 26th. In uh, is the basement available? Do you know, uh, we I think we should still technically have this room. Right? When does the work start? It's not, there's no date certain. For this time. Okay, in this room then. Town Hall, second floor. In between now and then, we'll work on everything. Make it, we'll make it. Drafts of decisions pristine, together. right. Yeah. Just as long as legal and beta and everybody is, is on board, I think that um, we don't expect any so problems. It, yes. Just to clarify, that's having everything in alignment and pristine before the deadline, yeah. Yeah. not <laughs> before the meeting. That's so, right. That's so, right. Yeah, our expectation right. is to have a Tuesday packet before. on the, yeah, by right. the Tuesday before. By Tuesday before, five o'clock Tuesday before. Okay. Right. Thank right. you. You're welcome. Are we gonna vote? Oh, all those in favor? We're discussion? Yes. Can we say we'd let Frank ask his question? Oh, yes, thank you. Out of respect for the other people that are here to speak, it's after 10 o'clock, I'm, I will not ask any questions of this. I, I might pose to you guys meeting, but you guys voted to meet, so meet. Um, I welcome you to submit your comments and questions. I'll make sure that they are Thank asked. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, so all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Any abstentions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. We are going to power through. Yep. South Street. South Street. Sorry for the wait. I appreciate your patience, everybody. Happy to see some familiar faces. <laughs> Still here? They, so I'm they we are. can ice them there, but we can also get the information to them. So um, we would very much like to do this without hurrying you, but as quickly as possible. I'm sure you're I'm of the same mind. Okay. Welcome. Hi. Please introduce yourself and your project. Yes. Uh, my name is uh, Harold Nahigian. I am the uh, manager for Southfield Properties uh, Single Eye at 97 South Street. Um, I'm here uh, along with uh, Andy Leverad, who is from Design Science, our architects, and uh, Joe Marcodont, uh, Joe Marcodont Associates, our professional engineer, Anthony Rotuno, uh, who is the CEO for Lycan and uh, Matt Trion, uh, who is actually the um, engineering operator and my um, project manager, uh, Bob Connors, sitting over there in the corner. And with that, I am going to turn this over to Joe in the interest of time to right. get it going. Thank you. Hi, Joe. Evening, Joe Marcadon. We're part of the design team um, working with uh, Harold. Um, we are uh, 97 South Street, um, about 1,300 feet southerly of Haywood Street. Uh, six and a half acre parcel between South Street and 495. The existing uh, number 97. Uh, it may ring a bell. It was part of a, a TIF discussion and uh, tax adjustment on behalf of Lycan and, and, and Harold back in February of uh, 2019. Um, the building, the, the parcel was created in 82. The building is about 35 years old. This is number 97 highlighted here in white. Um, Chiefly, uh, what we're trying to do is um, get a space for lichen biosciences, uh, manufacturing of, uh, manufacture of gene therapies. Um, after kicking this around with the staff at Town Hall, it appears that we are a minor site plan. Um, the we, the thresholds are, are brief. We think we're under those. Um, 5,000 square feet is the maximum for a minor site plan. We're on the order of 410 square feet on two entryway additions I've highlighted here 
and red Andy's referring to on his sketch. Um, we, the changes to the entryways and the walkways, we lose about three spaces. Uh, we've got on the order of uh, 320 on the project site. Uh, so we are minor. I, I don't want to minimize what we're proposing. I don't want the board to get the wrong impression. But I consider a lot of what is on these plans, as we're serving many masters, as site management. Um, the project site um, is, is a little long in the tooth. So we would like to um, take and mill and resurface from 99 uh, northerly. So from the limit of this building all the way to the other edge, the northerly edge of the pavement. Mill that, resurface it, and restripe it. It's been patched with sealant for 20 odd years now and it's, it needs an update. Um, we would like to um, update the lighting in each of those traffic islands that are set at regular intervals of the parking lot. Uh, a lot of the trees have been lost to disease, have brought it out, have died off. We would like to, um, as part of that, replace the poles and the landscaping in those islands. Um, to keep those trees alive, we propose some irrigation to those spots. Seems counterintuitive to put brand new trees in and then not care for them. And then out along South Street, there are a couple of uh, landscape islands that have simply lost whatever vegetation, vegetation was in there. So we've got a landscape plan through Western Nursery, Peter Mezzard's people, to uh, add some landscaping along the front, along um, South Street. So that stuff adds to the complexity of the designs, but I think it's because we're trying to satisfy a paving contractor satisfy a building department, satisfy a conservation commission. So there's a lot on those plans, but we are a minor, uh, minor site plan. So um, all our plans have been prepared, the designs are prepared to be in compliance with site plan standards. All our uh, building additions are in conformance with dimensional requirements and the zoning bylaws. Um, we are currently um, set to go with both conservation and design review on the 20th to wrap up the issues, issues between those two boards. So we feel that we have, have met all the standards, have put together a, a, a good design, and um, that is a brief, I guess, thumbnail sketch of where we're at if you'd like to talk about anything in depth. Andy's available, and, and I as well. Okay, right, John. So we've got a memo from uh, the Director of Municipal Inspections confirming their opinion and my opinion that this is a minor site plan amendment square footage doesn't meet the threshold of a major. They're, not, they're losing only three parking spaces, which doesn't meet the threshold of a major. Um, so it seems like it's an overall positive improvement to the site. The one thing that they need to go through is design review board since it is a site plan amendment and they are changing the facade of the building and those entrances are gonna be something different. So they are scheduled for the uh, August 20th design review board meeting um, to get feedback from them. Um, board members, I'll start with Dave. Um, can you just describe the uh, undergrounding of the utilities? With, with the, are they all currently underground? They're currently underground now. There's been a request from the fire chief to add an extension of the municipal water to a new hydrant to aid in uh, any potential firefighting uh, activities. And we're going to run uh, a line through the parking lot to connect those islands for irrigation. That's the limit of utility work. Well set. Mary. Uh, hello. This, uh, this plan is just for changes to 97. Is that correct? Correct. Um, both buildings are involved in this project, though? But Lincoln? we decided to call the project site so that everyone had a full handle on what the scope of the work was, was to this northerly side of okay. 99. So this pink line is the boundary line. There are reciprocal parking agreements and access agreements. Harold owns both 97 and 99, some, a formality more than anything else. But the idea was for you folks to wrap your arms around the scope of it, we would set the project site at that boundary line. Okay, and it, just for clarification, uh, is Lycan planning on occupying both of those buildings or just one of the buildings? Just one is the Okay, thank you. I just want to make a point. If you're going to speak, you're welcome to speak, but people at home cannot hear you if you don't come up to the mic. 
Uh, the question was, would, would Lycan occupy both buildings, 97 and 99? The answer is no, we'll, we'll start with one. We fully anticipate to expand uh, in the future. Please introduce yourself. Uh, Anthony Rattuno, CEO, Lycan. Okay. And yeah, I, my impression at first was that it was both buildings and I was just curious as to why you weren't t proposing a walkway between the two or a covered, covered walkway, but clearly if you're not occupying both buildings, that would be why. <laughs> so, thank you. All set? Yeah. Frank. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Joe. Another good, clear presentation. Uh, it's uh, very straightforward and I, I think it's a good idea. No questions? Um, as long as I, I guess we haven't received any specific lighting information as long as the lighting is um, down downward facing and not very tall was there was there anything that uh, I missed in my packet or I didn't see I think it might have been in there unless it was a different yeah, project. I thought it was just yeah. At least in the text, it did. There was, there was like a plan. There was a plan, but I wasn't sure specifically what it looked yeah, like. Sure. It might be something that would be handled by design review, but right. Um. Quite frankly, we thought we would take it up with them in greater detail. The idea was to meet the standards um, in the site plan review. So our pole is going to be 15 feet tall, LED fixtures, uh, dark sky compliant, uh, downward focused. We have no spillage off site. They're all set for safe levels around the parking areas for vehicular and pedestrian traffic, but we keep it all on site. Um, we submitted those assuming that we maybe have a cursory discussion and perhaps more in depth on the 20th. Okay. But yeah. that's the gist of what we're trying to accomplish. Okay. Hold on one second. Uh, no, uh, so from my perspective, uh, I think this is a great, this is a, what we want employers in town to do. Uh, unemployment's low. This is, uh, appears to me to uh, improvement uh, to the site to attract workers to like in bioscience. And the more workers we attract to like in bioscience, the more workers we attract to Hopkinton. This is, uh, as long as it adheres to all, everything it needs to adhere to, it's a total win. Total win. Total. Yes, I'm sorry. It would be helpful to get the lighting details and landscape details for the design review meeting. Okay, landscape details are in that lighting package, details. but we will follow up lighting. Yep, sure. Thank you. Anything else? I choose to Phil. Phil, did you have any comments? I, I, I had no chance to look at this. So. Okay, I think ask, it's, it's, it's so minor, I don't think we, okay, perfect. Um, and are there any uh, members of the public here to comment? And the fire chief. Welcome. Uh, just, they were very uh, forward with uh, access designs, uh, sweat path analysis, the working with us on some of the fire protection systems, so very happy with the experience. Thanks. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, okay, so um, from a process perspective, we usually wait for the design review board review before we make our final decision, but um, it doesn't appear like anybody has any um, big issues that you need to worry about. Um, when when uh, might we, yeah? If, if I may ask, wh why do we wait for the design review board? Because um, because they're not a regulatory board, and if the lighting doesn't, if they aren't oh, happy okay. with the lighting, That's um, right. we would need to put that in our because decision. Because they're just an advisory board. Mm -hmm. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate the question, though. Um, so when are we able to see this again? Um, as long as the design review board doesn't have a lot of comments, and it would be a fairly straightforward vote, we could probably squeeze them in on the ninth. Or the twenty-sixth. <laughs> you could say that. If people are amenable. We can do it. We can do it. I think we could do the it. The twenty-sixth. No, it's twenty-sixth. Oh wait. Oh, you, this is what the two. <laughs> oh, you mean August? Yeah. Sorry, I thought you meant yes, tonight. Yes, she was saying August. She was saying I, I mean, it feels, I didn't hear that clearly. Honestly, it feels very straightforward. I don't want to yeah. rush anybody. It starts to become a more like a meeting meeting, but that. Uh, it's, uh, I, I, I understand. I'm, I had some trepidation in my heart as I said the words. When is the design review? Twentieth. That's the uh, thirty-five minute meeting we're talking about, right? Mm-hmm. Through through the chair. Say approvals do go. Um, this is a question. Approvals do go. We, we we added an extra step or an extra meeting to accommodate quicker approval. Does that 
change the project schedule? Like, are you were you able would you be able to act sooner because we had an approval a week sooner or two weeks sooner? Uh -huh. Does it change? The sooner the better. Yeah. Well, that's that goes without say. So uh, please introduce yourself. Yep. And the question is, is there any reason that you couldn't wait until the 9th? Does it help you to, to be seen on August 26th versus September 9th? So again, just Bob Connors. I work with Harold Nahigian. The sooner the better, construction schedule-wise, and trying to get everybody on board and going. It's always appreciate it. Just my thoughts. I mean, I'd, yeah. I'd rather wait till September 9th. I mean, I know it's only a two-week period, but... Um, I have a preference to heat that 26 meaning very short. I think there's extenuating circumstances. Yeah, so. I agree. Um, the September 9th meeting is shaping up to be <laughs> really big. So that was another thought. Yep. Uh, this should be pretty close. It should be very quick on the 9th. Well, which is fine. I'm not arguing. I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, I mean, so I would just propose that we don't need any further review. We need design review. And conservation. Comments. Well, they meet ConCom, -Con, but it's a my, I, you know, I don't, I really think it's a design review board that we're waiting for. I mean, if ConCom -Con had some major that's feedback, the, we'd want it, but, but I that's don't. That's also up to them to, yeah. so uh, that'd be my take, is we just make sure that when we come back, we make it as efficient as possible. We don't need to go through the review. We hear right. design review board's comments. We have any questions related to those design review board comments, and then, and then we vote. So, uh. I will entertain a motion from somebody to propose the continuation date. So I would move to continue to September 9th. I'll second that. All those in, is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Aye. I'm abstaining. I'm a no. Well, no. Abstain. That's three, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. September 9th it is. I could have locked up that vote. Now that would have been fun. I thought it would have been good just to take it on the 26th. Um, I appreciate your patience. It should be pretty straightforward, <laughs> provided I, everything goes well with the design review board. We'll um, <laughs> see you on the 9th. And not, I, don't I will commit to you that we will not see you at 10. We'll do, we'll, we'll do it earlier in the meeting. Okay? That would be nice. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you, for, you for your patience. Appreciate it. Thank you. <coughs> All right. So the last thing is um, to revote those waivers for Whisper Way. I'll look it's in our meeting packet. Somebody remind me the page. Page not eight. Eight and nine. Nine, nine or ten nine. actually because it kind of rolls on. Oh uh, yeah. Eight, nine, ten. Okay, so starting on page eight. To nine. Okay. Um, so um, I think we're just going to take the waivers and fly through them and see how that goes first. All right. Does that make sense? Did we just the two or all of them? No, it's a new hearing. Okay. So I would um, I propose uh, that the somebody make a motion that the waivers that we previously approved. Um, we approve. Or we vote on them together as Yes, one. as one. Yes. So moved. Is, second. is there a second? Is there any discussion to that approach? We wait for Mary to come back. Yeah, she, she Sorry. clearly we, wasn't. I want to read out which ones those were. She wasn't ready for my, my uh, <laughs> efficiency. Def, the definitive plan, um, the cross sections, we waived uh, the number of cross sections that were needed. Um, we waived uh, the trees being, uh, because there are no trees being um, retained within the right of way, um, they don't have to identify which ones are being retained. <laughs> Just saying. Um, the street lights, we waived uh, the um, street lights, but the applicant has agreed to install um, dark sky compliant, low lit, lighting at the end of each of the driveways for safety. Um, the, um, uh, yep, slips. sorry, the what? Side slips. Um, I must have gone to the wrong page. I went to the wrong page. That's why it didn't make any sense. Um, the side slopes, the roadside slopes, uh, the three to one max. Um, okay. 
they're, um, we're waiving that requirement to bring the existing whisperway into compliance with the requirements for a maximum road slope of 10%. The side slope abutting the town forest in certain sections will need to be reduced to a two to one slope and vegetated and stabilized. So we're waiving the three to one um, requirement. What was the page of the, all these again on page? I'm on page nine now. Thank you. Yep. Of the memo. Of the memo. Yes, thank you. Perfect. Yep. Um, yes. Real quick, just for, for Mary's sake. Nine. Yes. We moved to vote on the previously approved waivers yes. all together as one Good group. Idea. Thank you. Um, the disturbance to the natural topography um, with depths of fill are going to be greater than eight feet to facilitate some of the crossings. Um, disturbance to natural topography, um, there will be some slopes greater than 25%. Um, stormwater basin embankments, the side slopes of the detention ponds will be three to one. Um, uh, due to buffer constraints, an impervious core has been added to the pond to reduce the side slopes to two to one while maintaining the top of the berm width of 10 feet. So reduced from three to one to two to one. Um, stormwater basin embankments at detention basin edges located uh, 25 feet from houses or property lines and the roadway that happens occasionally that's been waived um, those are the ones we have previously approved am I correct okay so we have moved and seconded that we will con consider all of those waivers in mass so all is there discussion all those so, in favor? sorry discussion yep. so those are not for the two remaining, or they are for the two remaining? The two remaining are, have not been discussed, or okay. not in it. Okay. Yep. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. The, the first one that we um, did not finish considering, it's a new hearing, so it's brand new anyway. Um, the buffer areas of a minimum of 100 feet. There are a couple places uh, because of the site constraints, the previous building, the, the previous existing road, um, where they will not maintain um, the minimum of 100 feet or greater, um, only to town uh, abutting property on one side, but abutting property, private property on one end, with nope. with an easement with easement. closed. Proposed mm -hmm. is is there no buffer required there? The easement doesn't require a buffer. A waiver to the buffer. A waiver. Thank you. Mm. Easement doesn't. I'm, I'm not sure I understand so, the question. So so explain to us where your um, the waiver uh, applies for the buffer zone requirement. Uh, so all along with the existing whisper, basically that's all. Um, and what's on the other side of the existing whisper? This is uh, town of Hall, the town forest. Yeah. Um, and then we have buffer all the way through here. Uh, I think there's a. I think this point over here it might be less than 100. Where this it's just the way the existing again the way the existing road is. Okay. Um, we and then along 495. Or not meeting the hundred foot buffer. Okay. Um, I, it's, this plan is just a prettier plan, but we're we basically square this off, and we're asking for just an easement through the open space. It would be an underground utility easement. Uh, we actually have are proposing one uh, through this portion here to connect in order to get the sewer from these two lots over to the proposed septic system. Um, so it, you know, it's just the width of whatever we need for the, it should be a fairly, um, be narrow, 20 narrow foot wide and, uh, and w w once we do the work, we'll just vegetate it and you won't know it's there. That's the internal one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that's, that's the thought behind what we want to do with the, this one as well is just for it, it's just just for future maybe if 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 solar went back that way there's a there's a there's a there's six acres there are 6.88 acres and then there's a, a a 31 acre parcel and a uh, and a five acre 
plus parcel that hooks all the way up to Valleywood. And um, it just someday, who knows, if, if the landowners got together. So the, and then the reason for it coming out this way would would, would very likely be just to, to get the th to get the three phase power out on Wood Street, and get, getting it through Valleywood would be very difficult. It's underground. So okay, so I'm going to go around the board and entertain questions on this waiver request. Rob, do you want to go first? Or you want to wait? Uh, I, I'd prefer to wait if I can. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm going to come back. Amy, you want to start us out? <laughs> okay. You know what, so, Gary? Why don't you start? I have a question. So the utility easement is going from the the back of that property all the way to Wood Street. No, Wood, Wood Street's in front of it. Yep. I no. understand. Okay. So can, can you show yeah. me where that utility is? No, no. Sorry, not the one internal. The one that goes external. Yeah. Yeah. If the utility easement's going to go from if you drew this line straight across, it's just going to go from here to. To, through the open space for that 100 feet. It's 100 foot long, 20 feet wide. Because this will be private property, mm -hmm. and before he sells this property, he would need to get a, he would reserve a utility access easement all the way down to Wood Street. But that's not a part of what he's asking for from you guys. But yes, he would need to have that utility easement go all the way to the street. Okay. I gotcha. Yep, I understand. Thank you. Okay. Frank? Uh, no questions. Okay, Mayor, no questions. Just, um, I'm, I, I, I hate to be devil's advocate, and you guys have gone way out of your way for all this stuff, but to me, it just seems like squeezing things in here and there and to my opinion if, if you can't fit if you can't fit a loop road through it this maybe, is for the the buffers right 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 understood yeah, understood okay. but just it's accumulation of a lot of different waivers and that i mean to me maybe it seems more like an anr off of wood street but that's my own personal opinion okay um i will tell you that i am not comfortable with the easement um and would rather that it there's just too much that we don't know and we're we're voting on without knowing anything about that what amounts to be a very large um large parcel if all the owners as you say got together um so that's me and i'll go back around i'm back to rob deb or amy do you know the the land that take uh this easement would go all the way through to potentially uh, Valleywood, is it? Yes. Yep. Do you know who the current owners are? Is it like this parcel right here? You're the owner of that? Uh, yes. A uh, 6.8, 6.88 8 acre parcel. And then there's a 21 acre parcel. And, uh, That's owned by somebody else. Owned by somebody else. Okay. And, right. I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I haven't even talked to them. Yeah. I'm just, this is just, I don't know, I guess, can I just come back for an easement some other time or? I mean, I'm going to ask, that, know I'm gonna ask that question, actually. Yeah, okay. is you, so, you had something you wanted to say or ask. And that it can wait. is just some general comments on the easement and the design. So his question is whether or not he can come back in the future for an easement. So Ron and I talked about the potential for that easement, and I looked into it a little bit further, talked to Elaine. And there's some uh, uncertainty as to whether that easement would be um, usable through just this process. So uh, one of the things we talked about is uh, it's been determined by the uh, courts that access for a higher level use, like commercial use, commercial solar, through residential use is not allowed without a variance. So that access may need to require a variance to mm -hmm. actually be allowed. Um, so, I mean, you could probably put an easement on there if you wanted to. I, I don't know how that would necessarily work with the open space. Um, and the planning board has no authority to, or not authority, but no requirement to allow them to put an easement for future development use on the site elsewhere. Um, so it's it would be more of a legal issue, I think, at this point, than a special permit issue. Um, 
allow whether they can allow that easement through the open space once the open space is established. Mm. Right. Thank you. And we don't know if he can come back for an easement I mean, in I the future. Assume just likely thinking. no. <clears throat> so I'm just thinking of um, open space projects that I've done and. Um, Well, one of them has a cart path, one of them has a path, has a water main under it. Um, I don't know. I guess I look at that right. as the same, but is it is is water, water? I guess the question is, is the water main serving the site? Because this easement no. would serve a use off no. the site through the... No, it actually it actually serves the town monitor for, a, for a, you know, a, a, another hookup, yeah. you know, another, another that, loop. That may be something that's allowed, um, I guess... My thinking was, if you propose this easement later, the open space would essentially be either owned by the HOA mm -hmm. or deeded over to Halt or the town, yep. and then you would have to work with that organization right. to get that easement um, at a later point. Yep. So okay. I'll, I'll just that would be something to consider. It obviously, uh, it seems to be resistant, so I'll just drop it. That's easy. Amy, were you done? Well, I guess does our vote on the buffer areas affect the easement? Yeah. It does. Okay. So if the septic, if we're, if, we're if, if in the buffer zone, the septic needs to cross over, what disturbance to the environment is that going to make? How big a hole are you going to have to dig and disturb the rock? to bring those lines all together to that multiple purpose septic system. How is that going to affect what you're trying to do by not putting a loop road, but still putting a system in there? What is the difference? Because you're still disturbing soil. You're still just rock. Yeah, it's significantly less disturbance. So <clears throat> again, the, the, if we did a loop road, um, the the width of the road is the width of the well, road. I know that, but I'm also saying, there, but what I'm saying is to not show it on the plan. Do you have the other copy that, that you that you Sir, highlighted? It doesn't impact the, the, the buffer. buffer zone, does it? Yeah, she said no, it. No, it's not part of the buffer. Oh, that one's not part of the buffer. No. Okay. So that it's one's not, internal to the correct. okay to the twelve homes. It's so internal to the open space. Internal it's to the. It's not. Open. It's not the. It's different than the buffer. Okay, all right. So it may affect wetlands ultimately, but it wouldn't affect. It wouldn't affect what we're voting on now. Correct. It does okay. not vote the, It does not affect the buffer. Okay. You Rob? I think if it, um, so my opinion, uh, the buffer space requirement, I don't, I don't have any more questions at this time. I think uh, they've done a good job trying to adhere to the requirements, um, so I don't have any more questions. Can I make a motion? You can. Um, so I'll move to accept the buffer zone waiver with one modification that it not include the easement on the utility easement on the southeast Is there a second? corner of the property. Second. And it was to accept the uh, to approve the waiver. Yeah, sorry, to approve. Yeah, Thank you. Right. Um, is there further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Any abstentions? I'm abstaining on this just on principle. Okay. Um, I think that he has a right to ask for the easement, even if it's not used for anything, um, from my understanding of it. Um, but that's all. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, the last one is the lot frontage depth. Um, so we talked a lot about that in particular. Um, so uh, I'm happy to go around the table and ask. Uh, members if they have any questions or comments in particular on that waiver request I'll start with Dave set. Mary no questions I'll sign no questions 
just gonna say I'm inclined to, to grant the lot wa lot frontage depth waiver because I, I think it makes sense even because they could get 12 houses either way. So I think it makes sense to have the lots make more sense in the driveways to accommodate. Uh, I agree. Yeah. I'm a, I'm in that I same. Agree. I think the the presentation was really well done. So. Right. So my, um, I don't really have a question, it's more just a statement. Um, this, is, this is the type of plan people in the town will look at. Like we, as planning board members, we, we should do what's, what's by the bylaws and I am gonna do that. Um, and a vote to, my opinion is to vote to approve this, but this is a plan the town will look at and go, what is the planning board doing in my opinion? And this is something in the bylaws we need to look at as we go forward in the future. I agree, Rob. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. Right. Just, just to comment on that, you're, you're actually voting against the bylaws when you're approving all this. So the bylaws are there to prevent this. Well, the bylaws allow us to waive. What's that? Well, the problem is this point, like, the, the reality is there's going to be 12 houses whether I approve this or not. So mm -hmm. me, me approving or rejecting, uh, rejecting this plan, we get oh, just a worse plan that will adhere to the bylaws. That's right. So the, the real issue is the bylaws allow this, this basically general configuration. Like the, the reality is this is not, the bylaws are not satisfying what people, people the, the best interest of the town in my opinion. All right. Just through the chair, I would just say that if, if you said no to all these bylaw overrides, they would have to come back with a better plan. I mean, I'm just, I'm not trying to convince you here. I'm just saying in one sentence, in one sentence, you're saying that the bylaws are not there. And the next sentence you're saying, I'm going to accept them all, you know, the overrides. So I, 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 that's will, the only point. I will hear everybody, but we're going to do it through the chair. And I'm just going to say, um, from my perspective, there are challenging pieces of property and there are respectful ways to approach it that sort of, um, that make the best of a tough situation and the bylaws are, if, you know, we don't want to do a bylaw review necessarily to fix a challenging piece of property, but more generally the typical um, building, but I get the point and I, I agree. It's not, this is, this is the essential work of the planning board is balancing the bylaws, the needs of the town, the rights of the property owners um, and, uh, and, you know, Every vote is, uh, is, you know, is a correct vote, right? And if I can kind of uh, piggyback on that, I, I think part of the challenge that we have is we have owners that have particular unique pieces of property, and I think they have to carve out what they can, and I think that's, and I think that we have to carve out our response as well. So that's just piggyback. Exactly. All right, is somebody prepared to make a motion on the waiver for lot frontage depth? I would make a motion to accept the waiver for lot frontage depth. Second. To approve the waiver. To approve. Yeah, approve the waiver. Second and the approval. moved and seconded. Is there further discussion? Yes. If I may, uh, I just feel like this might be the most appropriate time. Um, I think everyone, I'm actually very impressed with how the board is talking about this because that's what I was going to say, is that looking at a purely uh, interpretational view of the bylaw the, the authors of this bylaw contemplated these types of developments and that's why they allowed for the provisions of these waivers and the uh, common driveways um, so while i appreciate your concern about that i think the board has actually taken the right approach and very thoroughly reviewed these in the scope of this project rather than just grant them outright um, i think as somebody who's dealt with zoning bylaws and i'm sure a lot of you have dealt with zoning bylaw rights um, that's kind of the intent of that type of waiver allowance is to let the board do that. Um, so, uh, awesome. So it has been um, moved and seconded. Um, all those in favor of granting the waiver signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. Abstain? So um, we recognize that you have some uh, last minute details to work out. Um, when can you come back to have everything completely wrapped up and tight so, for beta? So the, the one question that I wanted, I guess, to just clarify with the board is, because um, the fire chief was um, saying that 
he was comfortable with the turnaround um, needs for the driveways. Um, but Phil is still looking for us to provide additional information. Um, when, prior to getting any of the building permits, all of these will have to be reviewed by the fire department again um, before we can get the building permit. So what we were hoping was that um, that we did provide the turning plan for um, what's it's called a SU-30, yep. um, which is, you know, a, a typical, like, UPS delivery vehicle. So we did provide that turning to show that that can turn around on uh, on all the driveways, so can I can I offer this? We are 50 minutes overdue for our um, adjournment time. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't see that as an unsolvable concern. Um, I think that that can be worked out. Um, Phil is a is a reasonable, talented yes. engineer, and the fire chief is a reasonable, talented fire chief, and. I think we can solve that. So I would just make sure that um, everybody is in agreement um, as best as you can before you come. But if we have to solve it, we will. But I don't think we're going to have to. Okay. So I, I think we can be ready for the next meeting. There's September 9th is pretty packed. What does it look like? Uh, so right now it's starting at 7:30. We've got 76 Main, 97 South Street, Maspinock Woods. Eversource LNG Pipeline, uh, Eversource Scenic Road, uh, 223 Pond Street Scenic Road, and Elmwood Farms Amendment to Definitive Subdivision Plan. Um, and Legacy Farms. And Legacy Farms now. Yeah, trails at Legacy Farms. Real, the trails. Yes. Nice. Um, I think trails. I think we're down to like four items. Is there a way to totally right? Is there a way to vote this? And condition it upon these items being being resolved. Um, I think they can be resolved administratively. Um, a turnaround for a truck in a yard. Um, I don't know. I, I just think I think we're down to the to the end. I, I don't what are the? What, I uh, get somebody rid of help us. me because my brain is is fried. Somebody help me with what is open from beta. Yeah. There's there are five comments. One is the plan providing the turnarounds. Uh, the second is uh, for us to show the type, the size, and inverts for the culverts going underneath the driveway, uh, underneath the driveways. Um, one of them is actually uh, just a uh, section in the long term operation and maintenance uh, regarding um, vegetation maintenance and it was actually in the last submittal um, but with everything else it was easy to miss I'm sure um, so we already addressed that one um, the culvert at the fourth one is the culvert at 5 plus 30 on Whisper Way uh, Phil's concerned about uh, some ponding that's happening in the wetland behind the, the culvert. Um, that's certainly a, an item that we can work out with him. Um, we will do whatever we have to do to satisfy his, his request to eliminate that ponding. Uh, and the last one is to add labels on the, the map for the operation and maintenance. And I would just also like to say that the board needs to um, entertain the discussion on um, pacing for erosion control and sedimentation concerns. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to propose, no offense to the applicant, but with four to five things still left to address, to me that's a little bit much for some type of conditional approval. And I think there's some discussion around those. So what that's, I, that's my personal opinion. It's my it. opinion as well. I don't know how the rest of the board is feeling. but um, but. I was just um, trying to save you some parking woes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, I would recommend that you spend uh, a little extra time with John and get um, the decision in an agreeable format. That'll make it easier. And you address with Phil 
the open issues recognizing that he has deferred to the board on at least one of them so we will have that conversation um, and if you were to um, have your decision largely agreed to and worked out with the town planner like if you got busy now and got your action items taken care of now and uh, worked with John to get a decision drafted um, it'll go very um, much more smoothly um, when we do meet again. Could we do that September 8th? It's the 9th, Sunday the 8th. We won't oh, the 9th. Be. Yes. Um, let me ask. I mean, I'm assuming you're saying this, this could happen quickly. If, 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 if Phil if, is satisfied. If, and, yep. and I, that's my feeling. I, you know, I feel like that, that's the uh, will of the board. Um, so, uh, would the board like to contemplate meeting at 7? in doing this and whatever administrative work we can do on the ninth. I'm a seven. Yeah, that's I'm fine. I can, do the, I can do seven. Frank? I find it hard to be here at seven. I know. Um, so, um, so what, what we'll do then, how about this? Um, we will crank through our administrative agenda starting at 7, which frees up meeting time after 7.30. Does that help? Okay. All right. So we're going to continue your public hearing to um, 7.30, but we're going to start our meeting at 7. All our public hearings will start at 7.30 as we have advertised on all the other ones. But we will have our administrative agenda um, starting at 7. Does that make sense? Yeah, the meeting will just start at 7. Right. There's no... We can, we, can po we can start public hearings at 7. We can tell applicants that. Because we just moved yeah. it to um, the date, not a time. Right. Right. We can start at 7. But... But either way, the applicants don't need to be here until 7.30. Well, so. if they are, we can... You know, we could we can right. proceed. Yep. So I would tell people that the meeting starts at seven. But for Frank's concerns, his his interest in being here, we'll Say work 7 through. Say seven fifteen, and then we'll go. work through. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So um, I'll entertain a motion to continue this public hearing to September 9th. So Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? <coughs> and we will start the September 9th meeting at 7. Um, and it is at the library. It's tentatively, it's tentatively at the library. Ooh. It'll be either at the library or here. Um, we have meeting on oh, that's right. Happily, we have another meeting on August 26th. Um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn and thank everybody for your patience. Thank you very much for your time. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions?